Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we are playing as the Gross Germanisch Reich der Deutschen Nation. So, we are playing as Germany, and we're going down a particular path, but let us begin with a national focus, a man on the moon. This is our moment, the culmination of decades of tiresome research and continuous advancement. Headed by the brilliant Dr. Werner von Braun, the German Aerospace Center is ready to commence its greatest operation to date, landing the first man on the moon if successful. It will become the Reich's greatest scientific achievement since the weaponization of the atom. The space race is to now come to an end, with the dominant will of the national socialism soon to triumph over the degenerate Americans and backwaters Japanese once again. <clears> H.H. <throat> Cool. So, Germany, eh? Oh, and also, we, I've already set things up, as you can tell, on screen, just because normally I like to show things, people that we select early on, and such like that, but I decided TNO takes so long to load, so we'll just jump straight into this. Mods we're using is TNO Last Days of Europe, Colored Events, Player of the Peace Conferences, and the State Chancellor Tool Mod, though only four mods for this one, but the Brown Eminence. If one were to gaze upon the drab visage of this balding little man, it would be hard to view him as anything more than a stuffy bureaucrat, one single cog in the grand mechanism of the state. <clears throat> Such a miscalculation could be a potentially fatal mistake. As chief of the party, chancellor, and private secretary of the Fuhrer, Martin Bormann has climbed the greasy rungs of the NSDAP in silent persistence, asking for neither fame nor access of, on any step of his rise to authority. His friends and foes alike refer to him mockingly as a brown eminence. Such a Scatological slur means nothing to Borman, who cares little for humor and less for personal insults directed towards his character. He is not a man of pomp or ceremony, but of duty and dedication to the Reich. Many would claim he is rarely seen stepping out of the Fuhrer's gradually diminishing shadow, except those who would whisper of his visits to beautiful young actresses and models throughout the nation. As the new decade rolls on, Martin Bormann continues to stalk the shadowy corridors of power in his ill-fitting suit, further enveloping himself in the mechanisms of the Reich's bureaucratic apparatus. The bizarre contradiction of such a despised man holding such enormous influence betrays a mind dedicated solely to the pursuits of power, whatever the cost may be. In my dictionary, duty is written in capital. So, why am I playing Germany right now? That is because on my Discord server, there was a poll, and we had a certain person <clears throat> win the poll, we'll say. Uh, let's go and slash all this stuff because we don't really need it for now. Oh, wait, actually, she just invested more in civilian spending right now because we're trying to build up some land forts around here. Actually, instead of level 10, we're going to go down to level 5. Uh, so basically, on my Discord server, I had a poll and Hadrish won again. Now, I played Hadrish before, but as of killing the cutting room floor, not killing floor, that's a different game, cutting room floor update, Hadrish has gotten new uh, content and people on my Discord server voted for it. So here we are. I was actually going to play Borman next, but Hadrish apparently won. So go figure. And it'd be interesting to see what Hadrish is because he's got. Some really cool events, and here is the influence stuff. We got some rubber processing, cool. Influence is high, power is high, and approval is absolute. But the gilded Reichs Marshal, if the Führer is a paternalistic ruler of the German Reich, then Hermann Göring is its popular uncle, beloved by the civilians for his jolly demeanor and the veil mark for promoting their interests throughout the decades. The Reichs Marshal has always desired to maintain the reputation of a diligent military man loyal to his Reich and his Führer. To believe such a thing would be to downplay the man's ambitions, having held many illustrious posts, from founder and chief of the Gestapo to the Reich's plenipotentiary of the Foyer Plan. The aristocratic Goring has developed a lust for power and wealth few could rival, residing in his enormous Karenhall mansion with his vast collections of outfits, jewelry, and artwork plundered from the Reich's conquests. The Reich's Marshal continues to coalesce as much influence around himself as possible, while not as close to Hitler as he once was. He has acquired relevance by becoming the de facto figurehead of the militarist movement. Some would argue that Goring is little more than a pompous buffoon, allowing himself to be puppeted by radical forces in the hopes of acquiring even more attention and power. Others would find such a suggestion to be foolish, for Goring has long proven himself to be manipulatively cunning as he is dedicated. His role in the future of the Reich politics remains to be seen. My measure will not be crippled by the bureaucracy. Cool. And old fat man. Very cool. So... Obviously, NS National Socialism. We have Burgundian system under Daddy Hadrish, and then we have just your, your casual light authoritarianism under fascism with Speer. The Reich's architect, a figure often overlooked in the convoluted politics of the Reich. Albert Speer's nothing 
nonetheless one of its key players. Architect by profession, and personal friend of Hitler from the beginning of his rise to power, Speer was attracted to the future Führer's persuasive dialectic and his great plans for Germany. The attraction was mutual. As soon as Hitler looked at Speer's work, the young architect found himself launched at the full front of the party leadership and tasked with designing dozens of public buildings. The war changed everything. Speer was appointed minister for the armaments during the most difficult period of the conflict, and it was there that the side of his personality made himself even more evident. Opportunism. He took the merit for Germany's production surge, but his main contribution to the war effort had been the invention of what would change the Reich forever. Slavery. Hundreds of thousands of inferiors and war prisoners toiled and died in the military industrial complexes, fueling the German war machine with their lives. After the war, Speer returned to his passion and single-handedly designed the Kulmen of the Reich's grandeur. Germania, the new Caput Mundi, was set to overshadow Rome, Paris, and all great cities of the world. And then the economy crashed, taking his dreams with it. In a moment of catharsis, he understood that slavery had been among the main reasons for the collapse, and in the most opportunistic of moves, he started speaking against it, asking for reform as an unwanted consequence. He soon found himself the focal point of a large reformist movement advocating for change, swept by current stronger than him. He, he decided to follow them, desperately hoping that no one would ever discover his mistakes. For good or ill, Albert Speer has in his own way reshaped Germany, forever changing both its architectural fashion and its society. He is, and forever will be, the Reich's architect. My, the Reich is my greatest work. Very cool. <clears throat> As you can tell, TNO is a very... It's basically almost an audiobook with me reading everything. <laughs> with a little bit of gameplay. Uh, let's see. We have a navy here. Honestly, the army doesn't even matter until we get to the Civil War, so... The Reich's last conquest. On the 19th of January, 1962, Eberhard Kölner, using a rocket based upon the A9-A10 design from World War II, and as a member of the team led by acclaimed scientist Werner von Braun, became the first man to ever land on the moon. While the space race had been a struggle uh, between the Reich, Japan, and the USA, and while the Americans had managed to put the first man in space, the Führer was proud to announce that the German landing firmly planted the Reich as a victor in the competition, and the Kölner, who was photographed giving the characteristic Nazi salute at the flag as Earth rose in the horizon, was a perfect example of the hero of Germany. A grand ceremony is planned in Germany to present Kölner and his fellow astronauts with the Iron Cross, and a week of celebration has been declared across the Reich. While stress congratulations have been sent from America and Japan, President Nixon has vowed that the U.S. would be the first to create a permanent mission on the moon, and Japan shortly thereafter announced it would be the first to land on Mars. The final frontier, political power, man on the moon, more political power, and r r more research speed. Don't mind if we do. The Blonde Beast. Ooh. Formerly the protector of Bohemia and Moavia, director of the SD and one of the principal architects of the Endlösung, the very name Reinhard Heydrich is uttered in fear by German citizens and Slavic slaves alike. A man of infamously intellectual and cultural sensibilities, the Reichsführer of the German SS hides his insatiably animalistic hunger for power behind a cold sheen of quiet reservation. While his meteoric rise in influence and status throughout the 30s and 40s surprised nobody, few could have predicted his ascension to the leadership of the Schutzstaffel would come as a result of Heinrich Himmler's failed coup in the 50s. Despite his many fractures, the party is unified behind its hatred of Heydrich and the fear of the SS. Men who believe it is only Hitler's respect for the man with the iron hot that enables him to maintain such a position of brutal authority, although others would point to a different source. Himmler, tyrannically despot of the mysterious Altenschaft Burgund, is theorized by many to be the true power behind the throne. <clears throat> While Heydrich and Himmler have their disagreements, both men advocate the return of the true national socialism, by which they mean an end to the corruption of the party and the imposition of a totalitarian state dedicated to the values of the SS. The attempts by Hitler's inner circle to reduce the influence of the, of the SS has not been entirely unsuccessful, but as long as Reinhard Daddy Heydrich remains to be its leader, it will not dissipate so easily. There is no problem which the Gestapo cannot solve. Very cool, my friends. Very, very cool. And we have a man on the moon. The enemy of my enemy. First U.S. convene the Reichstag. I want to go down here because it says Sin and Heydrich. <clears throat> and past a pact war game. So convene the Reichstag. Today we mark another milestone in the history of the Gross Germanisches Reich. The opening of the 1962 Reichstag. A grand ceremony, the annual opening of a Reichstag has become one of the most lavish affairs across the entire Unity Pact, with delegations of subjugated peoples coming from all across our vast empire to gather in Germania to hear the Führer address the NSDAP as we celebrate yet another glorious year. Needless to say, the opening of the 1962 Reichstag will be the grandest yet. Very good. Very, very good. No events? Actually, no defense or decisions yet. Oh, very interesting. Hmm. Uh, so, so, social development not doing very well for academic base. Uh, research facilities are fine. Agriculture is fine. Poverty is going down quite a bit. Modern industrial equipment is okay. Experience industrial expertise is going down, as well as professional army, which is not good. Not good at all. 
So, the assassin strikes up the Führer. On the 21st of January, 1962, as the Reichs celebrated the victory in the space race, Germania froze in shock. As an individual of Japanese origin entered the Führer's office and attempted to assassinate Hitler. Armed with a handgun, the assassin, suspected to be a member of the Japanese Kenpai Tai, would have killed Hitler if one of his bodyguards had not happened to enter the Führer's office off schedule. Hitler was shot once before the agent was killed and the Führer was briefly hospitalized before him being declared stable. While he survived, news briefly leaked that he'd been killed in the attempt and the Reichstag entered crisis without a leader. Members of the German RSD briefly locked down the city. Armored cars filled the streets and roadblocks ended all traffic for the day. The situation nearly turned to a disaster when the separate orders were given to both forces of the Wehrmacht and the units belonging to the RHSA to occupy the city and ensure peace. When both groups, as well as the RSD, ordered the others to send down, a 36-hour standoff occurred that nearly turned open war in the streets had Hitler not recovered and given a personal order for all military units to return to the barracks. Blood was shed regardless as several officials began belonging to various factions were assassinated in the chaos. Victims of plans sprung too soon. Heinrich Kimmler had denounced the chaos, claiming that the strike would have been prevented had the Reich not fallen to decadence, and ordering SS units across Burgundy are prepared to ensure peace in Germany, supposedly only if Hitler had requested their assistance. The German SS, was supposedly independent from Hitler, has begun voicing their support for his involvement. The incident has shown the dire need the state has had for an heir to the Nazi Empire, but the Reichstag sits frozen, unable to decide. Not only has this been brought to light, however, but the relations with Japan are now at an all-time low, and although Japan is denied sending an assassin, Wehrmacht leaders have been ordered to prepare ready for the worst. Our scars are exposed to the world. The Adler is launched. The port city of Wilhelmshaven houses some of the largest and oldest shipbuilding facilities in the entire world. Its awe-inspiring dry docks are capable of building nearly anything. Everything from corvettes and minesweepers to gigantic battleships that... that have left even these docks, even when the idea of a German nation was a still new concept. Karl Dönitz knows the production capabilities of the facilities, as Oba, let's see, Oba Befehlshaber der Marine, he has seen upon dozens and dozens of ships launched over the years, but this is a moment which will go down in history. Today, the largest and most powerful aircraft carrier of the Kriegsmarine, christened Adler by Hitler himself, is finally ready for its maiden voyage, a spectacle that will be broadcast all over the Reich. Admiral Dönitz knows what remains unspoken. The Adler is not the latest capital ship, but the last for this foreseeable future, as the Reich can no longer afford to build new ships as per the 1958 budget. Funding had been slashed in nearly all sectors. Ship maintenance and payrolls are all that the Kriegsmarine will be bankrolling for now. The ceremony was lovely, and the Führer himself thanked the Admiral profusely for his tireless dedication and work, with vague promises spoken about more funding for the Kriegsmarine soon, something he has done since 1958. Doing it ceremonially, ceremonially nodded when he needed to and offered thanks when appropriate, as he had done dozens of times before. Ever the more model of military man. He greeted the rest of the uh, Führer's entourage. He shook hands with Martin Bormann for us, an upstanding gentleman, really. Next, Albert Speer, an opportunistic Nazi, no more, no less. If Speer was opportunistic, then Dönitz wondered what Goring would be considered. The man was looking surprisingly spry as well. Last but not least, Reinhard Heydrich's cold, clammy hand. A blonde butcher and a dew de boot. The Admiral glanced back at his Führer, who was blabbering to, add to an aide. He was getting old, and old age was not treating him kindly. God help the Reich once Hitler was... Dönitz pushed the thought out of his head. He was a Navy man. First and foremost, let the politics to this fall scheme is. Let them deal with it. Hoist the Reich's, Reich, Reich's Krieg flag. Very good. And we'll also have enough fuel. Actually, do we have enough fuel? Ooh, let's see. I already organized the Navy as well. So, But it's my goal. As you can see from this video... This is going to be kind of a uh, long video because I want to get to the Civil War as fast as possible. So, we got a long, long time before we get there. Fetch me? Address the nation. Uh, we might do that. Let's see. And you guys. You guys are there too. That's fine. Go and train as well. And the Shipperinos led by Donuts. Go and train. We don't need fuel. So, how far have we gone with this focus? Uh, it's nine days. This is last for 15 days, so we wouldn't be able to get this done. So, just. Do that. Oh, wait, hold on. Go ahead and cancel it. And so today, the world watches as one of the most significant moments of the 20th century prepared to take place. Almost a week after the Fuhrer was shot in an attempted assassination believed to have been orchestrated by Japan, Hitler today appeared on national TV. With the necessity for an appointed successor after being exposed by the incident, following days of heated debate, Hitler stood before the Reichstag to announce his choice. Four candidates have been speculated for days. Martin Bollmann, expert politician ahead of the party, as a staunch conservative and believed the most likely candidate, also believed highly as a militarist, Hedman Goring, the beloved uncle of the nation of Hitler is the father. Another name being put forth is the architect Speer, one of the Führer's closest friends who has advocated for extensive reform within the Reich. Finally, some have even suggested that naming Daddy Vati Reinhard Heydrich as a successor would allow for the most for the hostility between Germany and the SS to finally come to an end. After a lengthy, sometimes incoherent speech during which the Führer spoke repeatedly about the strength of Germany, at times seeming to lose his train of thought, 
Daddy Fuhrer lifted a trembling hand and declared his chosen successor, and he would be conservative? The militarist? The reformer? Uh, the butcher. We're going to go with the butcher because of content. And because of this, we could wait a day for his thing to appear. Theodore Brendel? Seducer. We love seducers here. The beginning of the end. For Hedrisha, it was another day. Him counting down the seconds until it, his, the clock struck half past nine. For Germany, it was the beginning of a nightmare. Nightmare? No, it was his paradise. The Fuhrer would have announced his decision around 20 minutes ago if the old man had managed to get out of bed that day. The news would have covered it 10 minutes later if the censors rushed it through as they would have for one of his more lucid speeches. Five minutes after that, it'd be in New York or Tokyo. Ten minutes after, it'd be firing across Russia and throughout Africa. But none of that mattered. Instead, Hadrish sat and stared at the clock, ticking dutifully towards the moment, his eyes briefly flickering towards the telephone segregated neatly from the rest of, at the back left quadrant of his desk. Next to six pens of three different colors and a black marker and a perfect roll alongside it. A Burgundian telephone, they called it. Hitler's, or Himmler's line to Germany. To Hadrish, it was the mouth of the last true man in Germany, though through which he spoke to Hadrish and to the world. The clock ticked past its mark. And within the second, the, ro the phone rang. Two seconds later, and Hedrisch pressed it to his ear, where the greatest patron of Germany's future relayed its word. Congratulations, mein Schule. It is time. And give it give it one more day so we can get a new focus. Three. And should have it. The Butcher. If you'd like to read about The Butcher, go right ahead. <clears throat> but... Crush the protesters. In the aftermath of the Führer's announcement, the Fatherland has experienced a sharp increase in the uh, amount of anti-government pro-reformist acts of protests. Along with the veracity of said protests, to secure the Fatherland, we must permanently halt the spread of ideals counter to that of National Socialism. As a result, we must show no mercy f f toward the protesters, as they themselves have exposed their anti-government leanings. They must and will be crushed. Oh, we didn't even get... Oh, we didn't get the 10-day bonus. That's weird. But... Ah, uh, Hedrisch is success. Mein Gott. Hooray. So let's come over here. And the power struggle. From my understanding, let's see, influence means nothing. So what we want to do with this power struggle is eventually we get to get more units, more heal units to add in once the Civil War starts. But for now, I'm going to actually go ahead and grab a few extra thousand guns because we're going to need them to put down resistance. So I'll be honest, I have played this before and... I have practiced this campaign twice, and I'll talk about that a little bit more once we do a meeting with the Fuhrer. Tick tock, tick tock. Is it Tabby time? No, no, no Taborski right now. The Reich's Fuhrer Assess crossed his long legs, gently placing his slender fingers over one knee. The door suddenly swung open, and Hadrish rose to his feet to give a sharp salute. Hitler shuffled into the room, muttering to himself. His hair was hanging from his clammy forehead like a dead rodent. His left hand trembled violently behind his back. The old man stared at Hedrish with his large eyes, two blue marbles pressed into pale clay. Ah, the perfect man. How Hitler, Hedrish announced, the Fuhrer coughed harshly into the back of his hand as he shuffled towards his successor. It's a pleasure to speak with you again, mein Fuhrer. Your recovery has brought much joy to my men, as had your wise decision to name me successor. Perhaps we should be seated. There's much to discuss. Our economy, diplomacy, our very way of life must change if we are to save the Aryan race. The German Reich is infested with puppets. Our corpulent Reichsmarschall has become a mouthpiece of those militarist buffoons while Spiegel dances to the tunes of those bol forward Bolsheviks. National socialism will not survive these traitors. The man with the iron heart, Hitler chuckled, an Aryan in every sense of the word. A ruthless man in a sea of weaklings. You of all people should know I cannot die. The Fuhrer glared at the Reichsfuhrer with its lavish eyes. Feverish eyes, not lavish eyes. His trembling hand balled into a fist. Hitler is Germany and Germany is Hitler. If I die, the Jews will, Jews will descend upon our carcasses like vultures. An eruption of rasping cots exploded from his throat, cackling, racking his whole body. He clasped the armrest intensely, his face growing redder by the second. Tick, tock, tick, tock. The door suddenly burst open, and a cluster of the Fuhrer's personal guards streamed into the room. Mokas Mish held onto the Fuhrer's arm and pushed him to, pulled him to his feet shooting a fearful glance at Hedrisch. Before he could say anything, Hitler had been taken away. His satisfied silence was punctuated only by the incessant ticking of the clock. Tick tock, tick tock, Hitler's condition worsens. Alexei, is that you? Like a reserves. We're gonna just pay off debt for now. Um, yeah, actually, we want to invest a lot more military spending because, I, so I, like I said before, I did practice this and I did get up to level 10 forts, which were great, but we really need at least level 5 in all areas that I've marked in for the Mosulin because these are all the areas that we will have a border with with <clears throat> future people. So, anywhere on the river, we gotta defend. 
And actually, once the Civil War starts, I'm going to break for Köln as fast as possible. So, we'll talk about more about the Civil War as time goes on. Student protests intensify. As 62 began to draw on, and the government of the Reich remained locked in slow stagnation, the protests by student groups across the nation about slavery, the still failed economy, the constant border war in the Reich's commissariat about the fear of war, and about a thousand other things raged on. With nearly a million students continue, constantly marching, protesting, and disrupting business, and countless others joining them, the Reich seemed completely unable to cope with the crisis. <coughs> While many of the government demand harsh action, nobody knows what heart, real harsh action they can take to a movement so large and so disorganized. While threats have been made against the protesters, they remain undeterred as their numbers swell, when with no central authority, there is no head for the government to cut off. With the article so disorganized, and with so many paramilitary groups trying to keep peace, it's been a wonder that the situation has yet to explode. <clears throat> At least, this was the situation until a very small army of protesters began getting rowdy from, with a group of Orpo officers in Aachen and a small group of riot officers decided to open up the city's armory and quell the unrest forcefully. <clears throat> what? Wait. Doch. I'm going to leave that there for now, because I want to get more political power. We do get more political power, but, you know, I, I'm going to need political power so that we can uh, look for opportunities, so we can get more influence, so we can spend it. So, I think it just don't before. I'm going to say, wah. Wah. The student revolt, Der Tag des Verrats, as what they're calling it, the day of betrayal. Betrayal against the people of the Reich by their leaders, their police, and military by everyone. Police and Aachen took it upon themselves to open fire onto a crowd of teenagers who had started a small riot outside the lo small local Ortbo station. It was started as a police shooting that sparked a massive riot across the city. Aachen is now burning as Ortbo units there struggle to hold the lines against furious crowds of rioters, and with military stepping in and declaring martial law and Ortbo units ordered to stand down, large sections of the city have been left to the mob. <clears throat> The action hasn't been, hasn't been limited to Aachen, with both protesters and overzealous Orpo officers across the country taking up arms and inspiration. Most of the, of the largest cities of the Iraq now look like a war zone, with condemnation of protests and fellowship reaching as far as Muscovy. Will the second of the Fiora remain calm? Meh, we'll see what happens. What happens, happens, and we'll have a good time. Yeah, I really shouldn't have slashed this. That was my bad. It's alright. <clears throat> Where we're going, we'll be okay. So, technology already selected for us. 50s artillery-based bleed, improved anti-tank equipment, improved motorized equipment as well as mass and bombardment because we got to go quickly through our land doctrine. Because while the civil war for Hadrish is not easy, it is winnable. That's actually much more winnable than previously, before the cutting room floor update. So, the Great Bulgarian Game. Bulgaria, since the closing days of the Second World War, has been closely linked to Germany and her pact. This wasn't an issue for Bulgaria, and even was even profitable for the two in nearly a decade. The great market crash of the 50s changed, however, everything. So closely tied to the German economy, it was only natural that the Bulgarian markets followed suit. Bulgaria's very nearly left the pact, though, and the Germans, exerting the rest of their influence they had in the region, managed to threaten, bribe, and call enough favors of pact the Bulgarian administration with pro-German ministers. To keep the government under close watch, the German Germans, shortly after, deployed a garrison to Sofia itself to help keep the peace during the turmoil. Ten years later, and one still sees German boots patrolling the capital. Times are perhaps changing, however. The Bulgarian government is perhaps ripe to be overthrown. Prime Minister Gabrovsky, well known to be in German hands, recently died in a car accident. Rumored uh, surrounding his death, or surrounds his death, but whether he was assassinated or truly did die in a tragic accident means nothing. His death has given the underground fatherland front the hope they need to begin acting against pro-German elements in the country. As Italian influences attempted to snake their way to the country, the Reich has begun to crack down on what they see as dissent activity. Only time will tell what results from the two meddling in Bulgaria, and so the great game begins. Bulgaria, do you have a focus screen? No, they don't. You look kind of odd, Simeon, but man, I would love to see if Bulgaria had a unique focus screen. So we have turn one. If you want to read about how we play this, uh, basically, on the left side, we have our stuff. The right side is Italian stuff. we got to get up to 10. No higher than 10 or we lose. So, we have currently 6. And 1 to 5 points. I'm going to risk it all, then. Can we do anything else? We need more command power. Whatever. We have an 80% chance to get 4, 3, 2, or 1. We have a 20% chance to get up to 11. So, at 80% chance to get a higher number, I'll take it. You know, if we win, we, we win. If we don't, we don't. Whatever. Power struggle. Ooh. Look for opportunities. Divert infantry equipment. Ooh, you know I'm going to do that anyways. I want, I want at least 15,000 infantry equipment before we do the war. But the art of diplomacy. The cacophony of clinking glasses and waves of forced laughter was giving Martin Borman a headache. Among the 2,000 guests miling or milling around and sitting at tables were a fair number of diplomats of both German and foreign extraction. He placed the speech notes on top of the podium with sweaty hands, surveying the room in apprehension. The speech was short and simple, admittedly a little bland. Borman smiled to himself bitterly. He had never been able to match the striking visually, visual imagery and acerb... 
acerbic wit of Goebbels' writing. At times like these, he almost missed that lecherous little rat. Gentlemen, Bowman announced into the microphone, waiting as a blanket of sounds gradually fell upon the crowd. The Fuhrer! He turned to his right and saluted. The guests followed suit, rising to their feet and saluting to various degrees of hastiness. Hitler shuffled towards the podium and grasped it with two trembling hands. Recent events may have heralded a diplomatic shift for the Reich. Hitler's voice quickly faded away. Bowman's blood ran cold as Hitler looked up and eyed the room in or the hall in confusion. Where, where's Ernst? He told me you'd be here. Bowman strode over to the podium and placed an arm behind the fear's back, gently leading him away. The old man's body was violently quivering. I think, <clears throat> I think I was at your wedding. Hitler exclaimed loudly, his rasping voice reverberating throughout the hall. Confused murmurs erupted throughout the crowd. Are you still in the SA? <laughs> Forgive me, gentlemen. Walter Hevel exclaimed, swiftly taking the podium as Bowman and Misch led Hitler through the exit. The Führer was accidentally given my speech. Allow me to continue. The real question is, uh, are any of us still in the SA? You see, the Reich's diplomatic progression can be mirrored in some ways with the evolution of the Sturm ob Teilung. Disaster averted. Oh, boy. A crush protesters. The day began quietly. At dawn, a group of students gathered around the central SS office in Bonn. Using typical student chants and yelling about democracy and vaguely protesting the newfound influence of the shoot stuff on the government, the crowd seemed to grow throughout the day. It had been one of the greatest marches in the weeks, at least since Hadrius had been declared successor. It was not surprising, ultimately. Yes, the students protested all authoritarian rule, but the common German family who simply lived their way of life did not seem to be threatened. Hadrius threatened that. The prospect of truly living a Burgundian life, becoming a spot, and dying in mass for the state, no. That was for the Jews and Slavs, not an upstanding reformist Aryan. So, for the first time in what seemed like forever, middle-class families began protesting. Timidly, and at first in small number, but they grew and grew. By midday, there must have been a thousand people. They went on and on, chanting and chanting, and it finally died down a bit, a few departed. As soon as they did, <clears throat> three shots rang out from the SS building. Snipers. Three men began screaming. One went silent, the other went quieted to a whimper. Three more shots, two more brief screams. Somewhere. A rapid gun fire gun went off. There was a stampede. A secondary school student was trampled, trying to run. Dozens wailed. This was not the plan. That was not the plan. They had never been open on fire in a crowd. Not like this. The square was silent. Besides the remaining few whispers and whimpers, everyone had either fled or been shot. We live in a brave new world. Mobilize the SS. Oh, we get more legitimacy. I'll get that one as fast as possible. So, with the Fuhrer's choice to appoint Reichsführer SS Hadrisch as his successor, it's clear he truly desires a national social state under the management of the Black Order, though many happen to disagree. To ensure that our legitimacy remains intact, we must make the first move in this nationwide game of chess. We have to make the first move. Therefore, it is time to mobilize the Schutzstaffel and prepare the way for Hadrisch's Fuhrership. More legitimacy, get dark eyes, and a little bit more tanks, because tanks are going to be key to winning the war. I'll be honest, tanks are going to be very, 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 very important for what we're going to need. They're going to be the bread and butter, as well as a few planes. And we're losing population? Oh, well, whatever, that's fine. Oh, we do have no racial integration, military austerity, traditional role, poverty rate, war support. Eh, only minus 20%, that's all. That's all. Mobilize the SS. Militarist is high, approval is high, influence is high. Oh, Goring, the fat man. Oh, look at that. Look for opportunities? Absolutely. So, I'll read this for now. The Kriegs remain in decline. Although we are the world's foremost superpower, our navy does not hold up in this day or age. Outdated and massively under-equipped, many of our surface ships sit anchored at ports, understaffed and in dire need of refurbishment. A casual observer uh, may mistake active duty warships and dock as a mothballed fleet. It is only under Admiral Durrance's personal care that the U-boat fleet is even somewhat combat ready. There are no disagreements throughout the administration. The surface, fleet's, the surface fleet is severely lacking. Our analysts estimate that even the Italian surface fleet is stronger than ours. Them, but a disgrace, the Italians, to get the Navy up to a standing befitting our status as a superpower would require nothing short of a total restructuring of our Navy, complete with new ships, technology, and tactics. At this time, however, there is no feasible way we can achieve this. But there are some temporary remedies available to us. By cutting some of the Admiral's salaries and reducing waste, room in the naval budget for substantial improvements is possible, be it new weapon systems, overhauls, repairs, electronics, or even just a new coat of paint. We have an opportunity to finally shape up the Creek's Marine. Funds are better used elsewhere. Focus on much needed maintenance. The Fatherland only deserves the best. Hey, nine, that's not bad. If he gets up to ten, he wins. If he gets up to nine, it turns into a tie, I believe. The bloody foot in hand, though. The so-called monster in uniform of the Wehrmacht, Field Marshal Ferdinand Schorner, made a name for himself during the Second World War as a talented strategist and brutal commander, leading the troops in the invasions of both Poland and the USSR. Despite this, while glory in the war has heaped, was heaped upon him by Erwin Rommel, Hans Speidel, and even Goring himself, the Field Marshal's name as it's known today is not looked upon favorably within wider bureaucratic circles. Ever ambitious, Schorner desired noth nothing less than to be head of the entire Wehrmacht itself. 
Though a brilliant military man, his skill was not enough. His dreams of promotion were dashed against the rocks of reality by his cataclysmic performance during the West Russian War of the 50s. Considered a failure by many and generally despised by both subordinates and superiors alike, Shona had nonetheless followed the path as an influential leader of the Reich's militarist faction, and is considered to be Hermann Göring's number one man. To the likes of Hans Speidel, who he despises, his clique is a little more than a psychotic band of stable raiders. Rattlers, I should say. To Shona and his followers, however, there are saviors. They are saviors to, of the decaying and dying Reich, a noble band of warriors demanding greater power for the Wehrmacht and an increased sphere of German influence in Europe and beyond. The Zetas get no mercy from him. So yeah. But nine. If they get up to eight. I mean, if they get up to ten perfectly. Nah, blah. But I do want to do this one as fast as possible. Just because we have a certain amount of time for this. And I want to be able to get to the next one quickly if we have enough influence. But a day of remembrance today. That's happened on the tw every 28th of the March since that fateful day. The Reich remembers Daddy Goebbels. As time passes, many say that memories fade, but none in the Reich can forget the tragic and heroic figure that stood with the Fuhrer until his dying moments. He has, as he has every year, Hitler himself gave a speech, while his hands shook and he sometimes stumbled on the words, and they were never, nonetheless as emotional and powerful as they are every year. Over a thousand studied the ceremony outside the Go Goebbels Denkmal, so statue or monument, where Hitler gave his speech from the marble podium in front of the bronze statue of the late great filmmaker. While thousands of citizens, soldiers, and dignitaries stood in remembrance for the murdered dictator, famously and allegedly killed by French partisans almost a decade ago, the most important men of the Reich soon, became, soon gave speeches. Speer, Goring, Ballmann, all talked of the tears they shed at the news of the friend's death, of the happiness they felt when his murders were caught, of how they will never forget the great works of art he had produced for the Reich. While Reinhard Heydrich, representing both himself and Heinrich Himmler, who was not able to make the memorial, was not invited to give a speech, he did leave a cadre of half a hundred SS officers to lay flowers upon the base of the statue. The day ended with a slight bit of rain, and a healthy reminder of the great friendship that was terribly ended. Bedanke das Ende. Oh, Daddy Joey. So we have five rounds here. We got Bulgaria, was it? Romania, was it Romania? Bulgaria, Cro was it Croatia? I can't even remember who we influence here. So hopefully they'll stay with eight. Because we have a month left, but you never know. We only have five influence. Doesn't matter though, like I said before. Mobilize the SS, we have a week left for that. And we'll soon have better artillery, which will be very good for our war efforts. And smile a light beside him. Let's get more stability. Ooh. On Edward VIII, well, whatever. To show not only the party, but the nation that Hail Hedrish is worthy of the Fierce proclamation, we must show the population that we do indeed have the Fierce approval and therefore are legitimate. Therefore, we shall smile with, besides the Fierce and present Hail Hedrish as a loyal national socialist who truly represents the Fierce's political will and testament and a man who can truly lead the Reich into glory. Once more, dark eyes, my friends, fear lives in Germany, invited, welcome, and cradles the heart of every person and mocks their minds in silver austere cages. Fear lives in the children, who stop their games of street football as soldiers, clad in back black and adorned with mortality, march in step columns. They whisper to each other, dreading what they do not know yet still with horrifying accuracy understand. Fear lives in the soldiers, who eye each other with suspicion and murder. They see the battles and bombs turn inwards on themselves. They see their own mangled bodies trampled underfoot by the children who will fight the war they could not. Fear lives in Hadrish. Nestled close to his heart, it beats in tandem, composing a vile rhythm. All Hadrish knows is fear. He fears the children. He fears the soldiers. He fears his own fear. His preparations cannot alleviate his terror. They embolden it. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. So what do we have over here? Strategic fort building? Now, we have this. And we will do this because we need forts. And we're building forts, which means... We're not going to build any more forts now. So, here's the plan. We're going to build as many forts as we can once we get more civilian spending, which I promise I will do. But if we wait longer and we can actually build up to level 5 forts, then the extra forts that will be built here will actually be like level 6, level 7, depending on the fort level that's built. So, it makes more sense to wait for this one for later. So, we're not going to do this just because it's cheaper to wait for later. And I said I want 15,000 guns, so we're going to get 15,000 guns. We're probably going to start stockpiling more influence. Obviously, we need at least five for strategic build, fort building. But eventually, we get to get the SS or the hail units in, with us, so we'll, we'll wait. We just got to wait a little bit. And actually, is there anything for industry here? 65. It's only 62 still, so this, as I said, this is a, this is a long video. Oh, radar. Radar could be beneficial, but Otto Ernst Remmer. Remmer, born August 18th. 
1912. As a career soldier in Germany's Heer, Reimer joined as a commissioned officer in 1932 just as the Nazi party was rising in prominence. A former Hitler Youth leader, the Second World War would see him deployed on nearly every front the Reich fought on, participating on Poland, France, the Balkans, Reimer impressed his superiors during Operation Barbarossa, where he led his own regiment in Ukraine with distinction. In the following decades, Remert managed to claw its way to commanding his own corps just in time for the West Russian Revolutionary Front's invasion of the Rex Commissariat Muscovy. Again, he led with distinction in the fighting against the communists. Remert's corps was also instrumental in sabotaging Himmler's coup. He and his men arrested more than their fair share of SS formations when Spado sent his orders. Remert has not been sitting idle since then, however. Ferdinand Schona made his acquaintance with Remner shortly after the market crash of the 50s, and the two aligned thanks to their staunch opposition to any and all military cuts. As of now, Remer acts as Schona's right-hand man for the most militant of the German military command. Highly intellectual, or highly intelligent and ambitious, Remer is certainly a man to watch. An opportunist at heart, the role he has yet to play within the Reich is unknown for better or for worse. The man state needs an iron hand to get it. We are Germany's iron fist. Handsome iron fist, it should be stated. Very good. It looks like Italy is kind of content with eight, so hopefully we'll win this one. What are these other ones? I really don't know, but we'll know soon enough. The new Bulgarian man. Cut that. Invest in more construction. The Fjall Museum. Dr. Karl Brandt, swiping, uh, or swiped the... Swiped? Wiped the sweat from his forehead as the Fjall began a speech, flanked by two grand podiums. There were only a few dozen people in the crowd, not a single one was unimportant. Reich's minister Werner Naumann and representatives of the RMVP stood with the famous architects and artists and reporters of the state press. Hitler's pompous adjunct, Julius Schwab, was shooting daggers at Martin Baumann, who was watching the Fuhrer like a hawk. They were all nodding respectfully as Hitler began to discuss the late painter Adolf Weissel, pretending to ignore the two trembling hands thrust awkwardly behind his back. Despite Brandt's severe protestations, Schwab, a Schaub had insisted that Hitler's travel to the Führer Museum and Linz to officially open the new art exhibit, including a newly commissioned sculpture my successor now. Unfortunately for the young man here today, it is, a, it is a curse of great artists to die before their time. Adolf Ziegler passed away only a few years ago, and Arnold Brecker's recent death has wrecked the world of sculpturing immensely. The crowd slowly turned to the left podium, while Arnold Brecker was still frozen, his eyes darting fearfully around the room. Brandt wiped his forehead again with a drenched cloth. Many of you are too young to remember the days of degenerate art. The Führer trailed off. His whole body suddenly tightened up as he staggered onto the right-hand podium. Brandt's blood turned ice. Hitler's arms violently jerked out and his head snapped forwards, slamming into the marble podium with a sickening crack. A gasp of horror exploded from the audience as the Führer crumpled to the floor, blood pouring from his forehead, arms and legs still writhing. A woman screamed and yelled, man, a curse. Rokas Misch was yelling at the crowd to stay back. Bowman rushed forwards and slipped onto the blood with a yell staggering into a shaub. Brandt turned Hitler onto his side and inspected the wound on his forehead. It was just a cut. The doctor shot Shaw a glare as the uproar reached a fever pitch. F word. Stability goes down, Hitler's condition worsens, and I will be right back. Ah, smiling besides Papa Hitler. Hitler, Fuhrer the Reich, stood up to the podium and had a coughing fit. When he was done, he looked up at the crowd and peered at them for a second and then looked down at the script placed on the podium before him. I reaffirm the capability of my appointed successor. Hitler looked dazed and asked the bodyguard next to him what was the name. Uh, Heydrich, my fear. He said that if he had to say that frequently without the usual fear when addressing the Fuhrer. The capability of my appointed successor, Heydrich, as a Fuhrer in what will be my last and most unfortunate absence, the man has served me loyally and will continue to serve the Reich. The man is not only a vanguard of the Aryan race, but a true enemy of the Jews the world over. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, where... <coughs> uh, 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 thank you. Uh, Hitler stumbled off stage to the confusion of the crowd. Well, at least we got that second endorsement. And apparently the degenerate Americans passed something called a Civil Rights Act of 62? Nah... Nixon submitted to the weak. Uh, intimidate politicians. Ooh. Actually, we lose weekly manpower, but that's fine. You know what we're gonna do? Ooh, ooh, that's not bad. Let's replace the garrisons. In the Reich's major metropo metropolitan areas, the Heer is entrusted with garrison duties, supposedly to keep the peace. Yet in recent years, with the majority of the Reich's cities engulfed in protests and crime, they clearly failed in their mission of order, thereby providing us with Cassus Belli to replace these failures with the proper National Socialist Men of the Schutzstaffel, who, unlike the Wehrmacht, will succeed in restoring order also. See, I've invested a lot more construction, as you can tell by the annual deficit. Has gone quite a bit smaller, and we're building 2029. 20, we will have what we need accomplished before the end of, or before the war breaks out. So we want to make sure that we actually have some like radar too. Probably that probably be pretty, pretty good. Helps out with attack and defense. And we have another uh, turn for voting for against Italy. So we have level nine. We started with like four. I chose the one that gave us either two to six. So we can do a spark of fire. 
or Mobile as a Garrison, but either one would put us over the limit of 10 anyway, so we're done with that. And looking for opportunities, strategic fort building. I want to do that, and I did say I want 15,000 infantry equipment, so... We're at 15,000. I'm going to save up my influence, because we'll get the strategic fort building, but I want more divisions with us, because we will need divisions to win the Civil War. Because I've played the Civil War twice with the Cutting Room Floor update, and I... I won once, and the other time I didn't win just because the game crashed, but I was basically winning already, so. And I did practice it twice, like I said, so. It is manageable to win. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy, but it's manageable if you know what you're doing. Madagascar requests medical equipment. Rex Commissariat Madagascar has sent us an urgent message. They're experiencing an outbreak on pl a plague on the island, though the outbreak is in its early stages due to a combination of poor infrastructure and inadequate resources. They expect the situation to worsen despite their best efforts. Rex Commissar Maurice has requested a large stock of medical supplies and equipment to be sent to the island to help contain the disease before a full-blown epidemic develops. The request will luckily not be or not inconvenience us by much, but the domestic situation in Germany is hardly sure either. Should we send what they ask for? Sure. What could hurt them there might hurt us over here, so we might as well help out our fellow uh, dude, we'll call him. And pay off just a minuscule amount of debt. We have over 300 billion in terms of GDP, which is not bad. But I'll keep this open. Yeah, fake the riots, divert stuff. So hopefully Italy does not do anything else here. And as, as long as we get to three with the turns here, and we win, you know, we win three turns, we get Bulgaria on our side, which is really nice. Now, it doesn't look like the Italians are doing much, but you never know. You never know what the Italians are up to. You never know. Yeah, actually, let's go and look for more opportunities. Expansion of slave camps. Slavery has been a fact of life in the Reich for well over a decade now. Slave labor dictates or dominates most labor-intensive sectors of our economy, and it represents a huge portion of our GDP. The institution is old enough to contain a new generation that only knows the walls and barbed wire of the labor camps. For a while now, the slave population has been slowly but steadily rising, and apparent that now we need more living space for the increased number of laborers. The camps are starting to overflow with people, and their living conditions are already, de already declining, even though they probably weren't very good to start with. Although it's inconvenient, something should be done now. Living conditions aren't safe for the slaves, which makes it dangerous for the Germans to guard and employ them. The most simple option available to us is to build new labor camps, but there's also more creative approaches we can consider. Improved conditions and sanitation. Hand some of the slaves over to the Heifel laborers. Begin construction of new facilities. Our men will take care of the situation discreetly. Massive bombardment. Oh, massive anti-tank stuff. Cool. Let's go grab this. A more heart attack and line recovery rate. As well as, we're going to double down on our Maneuver Warfare Doctrine, so. We won't get that done as fast as possible. Can we invest any more construction? Doesn't look like it, and that's okay. Brazil wins the World Cup Final. Congratulations to the champions. And we have two-thirds of a million manpower in reserve. The collapse of the Triumvirate. It was only a matter of time. Good for you. Yeah, good for you. Fifteen is good. Not bad. And we shall replace the garrisons. Supply the Waffen. With a newfound influence over the matters of governance in the Reich, it's time we implement a policy of favoritism with regard to supply. In order to strengthen our position in the run-up to the Führer's eventual passing, it's time for us to allocate a greater amount of supply to the Schutzstaffel's divisions, which will, of course, negatively impact our rivals in the Wehrmacht and establish where our loyalties lie. Nine. Seven. Not bad. Yeah, I mean, we could get 20,000 guns, but 15,000 is pretty good, especially since we're stockpiling more guns right now with our focuses, so... Uh-oh. What is this? Bulgaria declared a state of emergency. Oh. Well, we'll see what happens. I can't do anything about it. So, a midnight call. Heil Schmittler. Reinhard Hager spoke softly down the phone. This is Lorex Führer SS. I understand that the Führer has permanently moved to the Burghof in pursuit of medical isolation. What is his current medical state? How Hitler. Brandt's, Brandt's voice came after several seconds of silence. My apologies, uh, Rex Führer. I wasn't expecting such a call. I'm, uh... Expecting to see a turnaround. As long as I'm not interrupted by the likes of Julius Schaub, that is. He keeps accusing me of undermining his authorities. I'm surprised he hasn't been hanging for his insolence yet. Hedrus replied coldly. That is all, Dr. Brandt. He puts the phone down and presses his fingers together. The Fierro's incapacity has to be, had to be exploited to its fullest extent. He scanned the documents before him, making Bowman look weak and incompetent was simple. He just needed to ignore any orders directed to him by the Fierro's secretary, while strengthening the SS implement process. Goring's faction drew its power from his unity, but a secret brothel recording obtained by the SD would soon change that. The Reich's interior minister, Wilhelm Stuckart, one of Goring's closest friends, had been caught on tape 
explicitly mocking Shona and Remner, the strongest military allies. As for Speer, the SDA also uncovered an illicit affair between one of Speer's reformist technocrats and the military or the Ministry of Economics and a university student with ties to radical liberal movements. Upon the leaking of the scandal, Gestapo agents will waste no time in spreading rumors that this affair is not an isolated incident and that the relationship between the party reformists and the liberal students is more than ideological. Without Hitler to hide behind, Speer would have to fend for himself. The race has only just begun. Very good. Yeah, I'd like to do stuff here, but... Oh, actually... Oh, declare a state of emergency, and... A little bit of lag. I don't like to click on this because I want to keep my stability high so I can get at least a little bit more political power. It's not much, but I'll take it. Zero, and... Okay, so we're at three to seven. Nice. Anything else down here? Not yet. Fifteen influence. Not bad. Mm. So we're at three. They have seven. One to three. One to five. I'm going to go large first. Eliminate the bandits. Because odds are we won't get five, which would put us eight. We'll probably get like four or three, I'm assuming. And then we can probably launch one of these and probably fill us up pretty nicely. But we'll see what happens. We shall see what happens. Actually, what's my air force like? Did I destroy the... I did not destroy the air force yet. Yeah, maybe I actually kind of did, sort of. Uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, I did. Cool. War in the desert. So be it. Oh, the Republic of Yugoslavia, huh? Oh, that looks really bad. Bosnia has no, no special focus tree, and the government of National Salvation doesn't. They're a puppet, and... Well, I found Tito. Well, good luck, Italy. We'd rather hate them than hate you, so... Oh, we're at six, huh? So, we have a chance to get up to four. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, we only get one point, and then do a large propaganda campaign. Or maybe get, I want either one, or I want to get number four, so... Hitler's severely ill. There we go. Bring HAL regiments to our side. The army, the army is steadily fracturing. Officers and officials, uh, soldiers, swearing their allegiance to the man rather than the Reich. With our leader's position as a legitimate heir to this Hitler's legacy, we can leverage the support of several HAL regiments whose loyalty is still uncertain. Yes. Gotta max that one out as fast as possible. How is this coming along? Oh, more. More, 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 more. We're doing very well building all this stuff up, which is very good. Actually, I'm going to actually build up an extra one in Strasbourg, because that is going to be our capital eventually. Just in case. You never know what type of bad things could happen there. And there goes Yugoslavia. And off-screen, I did grab a cup of coffee, so... Nice and warm. Tito and his partisans defeated, as they should be. Oh, led by... Zonemir. Supply the Bafen, though. Has Burgundy finally done it? Wunderbar! Redeploying here. To succeed in our mission of successfully prom promulgating the supremacy of the Schutzstaffel to the Wehrmacht, the time has come to strategically redeploy the Heer to benefit the rise of the SS. By conducting this seemingly strange maneuver of men, we will further secure the position of the Schutzstaffel with regard to eventually becoming the Reich's main fighting force. Our opponents in the Heer can whine and whine all they like, though it won't change a single gosh darn thing. Alright, let's see. Anything down here? Nope. So we are at 8. Now that is not very good. Well, let's see what moves they deploy. As they go up to 9 or 10, well, then whatever. It's only turn 3, and I believe we did win the first 2, right? We did win the first 2, so we'll see what happens. If they get up to 9, then we'll do launch of propaganda campaigns. There's a 66% chance that we'll get what we need to get 9 or 10, so... And they're 10. Well, we got to take the chance in. If we lose, we lose. No big deal. No... Big deal. Medium power, high power, absolute approval. Hey, better motorized stuff. Cool. Let's go ahead and grab... Ooh, grab better infantry stuff. Because we'll grab tank improvements later on during the war, probably. Wow, we need quite a few bits of this, don't we? Oh, I guess we're maxed out, huh? Nice. Very good. Build, 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 build. We'll get some radar. And I might also... Actually, it'd probably be good to build up synthetic refiners, because during the war, we can trade with other people, so. Hopefully, I think Italy. Hopefully, we can trade with them. So, we'll see what happens. But I will build at least one synthetic refinery, just in case I get a little bit more fuel gain. From refineries... Wait, why is it refineries minus 720? That is not ideal. Well, maybe we'll build... A, actually, I might build a fuel silo, just in case. Turn 3. So, uh, we lost. So, we got 11 out of 10. So, be it. Whatever. 
and look for opportunities. The Autobahn Renewal Project. Germany's famous highway system, the Autobahn, has seen better days. When Hitler took the project over in the 30s, he greatly expanded the system to encompass the entirety of the Reich, making it the largest highway system in the world. After the Second World War, plans were put into motion to see the expansion of the Autobahn to all corners of the German-dominated Europe, from Muscovine to the Gibraltar Dam, and everything in between. Ambitious expansions were planned for the booming, growing cities of the Reich, and were proceeding smoothly. The great economic crash of the 50s put a quick stop to everything, though. Funding was massively cut, making the planned expansion simply impossible. The highways began to decay from a chronic lack of maintenance. A stack of proposals have been sent over to our desks. The paperwork details plans for a massive work project to begin much needed repairs throughout all the Reich on the Audubon, expa uh, Audubon expansion plans. For easily congested areas have also been mapped out. We only need to give the okay to begin the work. Tragic oversight that we will repair. What the hell to work? There's no need. It would be a waste. And more hail regiments? Yes, please. Uh, by the end, hopefully we can get like 20. I would really like to get at least 20, so. Even if we don't get Bulgaria under us, that's still okay. You know, things happen. And which way is Italy going to go? I, After the cutting room floor update, I often see them going down a more democratic path. So, I sent Navy. Declining trade, that's not good. We're going to pull the hell ILP and, vic and victory in the Scottish elections. Can they hold the, together the country like the SNP? Prussia, the Kriegsmarine. It is notorious as being the least political of the three branches of the Wehrmacht, yet also tends to be the most pro speer branch. Due to both reasons, is where the SS has had le the least influence. Given the importance of the Kriegsmarine to the Reich's operations on the event of war, we must attempt to convince the men of the Kriegsmarine to support Hal Heidrich's bid for the Fjallship to ensure the Reich remains stable. Naval experience gain goes down by day, and better ideology drift defense, and we must continue spending money. We must. There is no option. So, 7, 6. Strong arm the opposition. 1 to 5. I'm going to strong arm it. There's a 25% chance we get to 0.4, but I'm going to take those odds. We probably won't get it. We'll see what happens. Ooh, we got 20 days for that too. Not bad. Yeah, 6 for them. 7. That sucks. Too bad we didn't start with 6, but whatever. Ah, the Americans got war again. Go figure. Good. Good. Keep building. Build, build, build. And use more slaves if you have to. So we'll have all of this as a really centerpiece around here. Even up here, like we won't spawn with the Rhineland, but where we're going, we're going to be able to take it. So, Alright, place Simeon under house arrest. Hey, see, we got 10. Nice. So basically, we've already won. They've, they are at 9. We're at 10. I took the risk, and we got it. Nice. And I'm going to keep an eye on this a little bit more closely, just so that we can always spend our influence. Anything here? No, 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 no. 15 days left. 4 days. Oh, it's about a little more than a month. So a month and 10 days. That's not bad. 3. Yeah, moderate, moderate, moderate. Yeah. If you didn't know, I, I had to look this up on, the, on like, the Reddit. But, yeah, you definitely want... <laughs> you don't care about... Influence really means nothing. Especially where we're headed, so... Anything for money? No. Cool. Pressure of the Kriegsmarine in about six days, five days. But we're going to get this technology first done. Synthetic radar operations? Nice. After that, we could grab some more recon. Maybe we'll focus a little bit more on gun stuff. But then again, we were doing radar already, so we might as well get level six radar, right? Even better radar. Actually, no, because it won't even matter because all the range that we get already, probably. So let's go and get some more anti tank. Very good. So, cripple communications. To further destroy the Wehrmacht's ability to counter the Schutzstaffel, it's time to we truly separate them from the Reich at large by crippling their communications. If we were to conduct this rather dubious act, it will increase our capabilities to counter the Wehrmacht in the event of possible conflict, as we'll be able to far more effectively strike down our opponents, as it will be us who are prepared for war. Very good. What's the next technology done? Oh, wow. All three are done within like a month and a half. Overwhelming strikes is pretty good. Uh, more defense and soft attack. That's not that's not a lot more. Two percent. It's okay. So feels a little weird. Like early on, when you begin the campaign, you get so many events, and now it feels like it's just kind of trickled down to almost nothing. So but that's okay. That's okay. Six days, less than a week. That's good. Wait, uh, they got eleven. So yeah, good. Good job, Italy. I love you, Italy. Well, Italy's. Oh, they're fighting down. Can I send volunteers? Oh, despotism. No, can't send volunteers, can't send volunteers, no. Turkis? He's got some thick glasses. Carlo Alberto Dalla Chiesa. I can't speak Italian. Oh, wait, do you... 
Wait, you actually have a focus tree. You actually have a focus tree. So what campaign playing as a governor Governor Nato del Levant's focus. Hotline Jerusalem. I gotta play as this nation someday. Holy cow. Full of Levant. Cool. That's nice. alright. And bring more hail regiments. And protests reach new heights. Student protests have long plagued the Reich. Intermittent rallies and campus marches have are not unheard of and have been held in small numbers ever since the NSDAP came into power. However, protests have become much more frequent and intense after Hitler announced his successor. In major cities all across the Reich, German students have rallies and marches across university campuses, some with migrating into the streets. Students have effectively shut down most campuses, and students have taken it upon themselves to block off government and army buildings. Many of the larger gatherings are flat out refusing to disperse, and students at the many sit-ins refuse to budge. A large crowd of over 200 people even blocked off in SS barracks. It's a miracle that no one died. We needed to do something about student protests now before the situation spirals out of our hands. One way or another, we need to take action. Right to protest, deploy the troops, give the order, send in the army, or just send in the SS to make sure work of these libs. Well, unfortunately for the libs, they've chosen their uh, decision making. Or they've made their choice. You know, whatever. Words are hard. Hey, here we go. Eight and seven. Wow. Um, we've already won, so it doesn't even really matter. Good job, America. You've beat up some weaker neighbors. <sighs> Feels good, doesn't it? You know what? There is a 50% chance we get arrest known leaders to get t 10. When selected. Oh, I don't want to lose any more political power, actually. Lose manpower, that'll be fine. There's a 66%, 33% chance we get what we want. You know what? We're going to risk it. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Let's go down here. And that's good. A little less than a month until we can do more stuff down there. Good. Thank you. Good, 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 good. A trip to the tea house, any other man would have admired the beautiful scenery that surrounded them. Any other man would have breathed in the fresh air with deep satisfaction while surveying the rolling green hills. Any other man would have listened intently to the melodies of nature from the chirping of the birds to the buzzing of the grasshoppers. Not Dr. Kalbrandt. He was watching the fear like a hawk, ready to leap forwards in an instant. Despite his deteriorating condition, Hitler had asked Brandt gently if he could maintain his old ritual strolling to the tea house on the Muslanerkopf Hill. Julius Schaub had soon caught wind of this and despite Brandt's numerous protestations, forced him to adhere to the field's orders. That smug sificant, sificant was striding alongside them, inhaling deeply as he basked in the sunlight, imagining that idiot tripping over and smashing his face upon a rock gave Brandt some modicum of relief. Hitler suddenly halted in his tracks, panting heavily. Brandt dived forwards just in time to catch the old man by the shoulders as he collapsed backwards like a puppet without strings. His face was pale and covered in sweat and his breathing was raspier than usual. Brandt gently lowered him to the ground and turned him on his side, tearing off his own jacket to place under the Fierro's head in anticipation of a seizure. As he suspected, Hitler's body soon began to jerk uncontrollably. Don't just stand there, Brandt shouted at Schaub, who was staring at the two of them in distress. Get calm... Kemp Kai now. Schaub nodded and raced back towards the way they came. After a few minutes, the seizure stopped. Hitler was breathing raggedly, clutching at the dirt beneath his hands. His eyes were filled with tears. At last, the car arrived. Erich, Erich Kemp Kai, leaped out of the driver's seat and thrust open the back door. Brandt slowly helped Hitler to his feet and guided him towards the vehicle. Place a fear under a 24 hour medical watch now. Yes! Implicate the militarist. To successfully seize the apparatus of state, we must do first do away with our opponents in the Wehrmacht, who continue to cause us considerable heartache. Given our unbridled control of the Reich's main security office, RASHA, we have the capability to easily falsify evidence and issue a warrant arrest with little resistance. Therefore, we shall recover supposedly lost documents which seem to implicate the Wehrmacht's hawks in a plot against the Reich. Here, no evil. The men move quickly, but not hastily. They have prepared experience. Every action was taken with cold surgical precision. Thousands of them, constructed like clockwork, made their simultaneous moves. The SS had a knack for destruction, let's slice up wires, immolated documents, and brutalized trusted messengers. Every effort was made to blind the prying eyes, amputate the groping hands, and deafening or deafen the eavesdropping ears of Heydrich's opposition. By the end of the day, orders and communiques communiques descended into confusion and confusion. Hadridge's own methods of communication stood intact, of course. Information passed smoothly between his commanders and men. They were united in purpose and thought. The traitorous rabble, distinguishable only by their specific, only by their specific branded degeneracy, could not help but feel all at their own isolation and entire nation deaf. My apologies for mispronunciations. And there you go, that's fine. 82, we get 1.3 every day, which is not too bad. Hitler's situation is critical. No! Hmm. We had a 50% chance to get 10. 
in Theodos, a great thorn upon the Atlantic. The great German Reich had long eyed Iceland with utter contempt. After all, the island was Achilles' heel in the Reich's strategic planning. Worse was the fact that they had allowed it to become so. With the end of the Second World War, they willingly allowed the Americans to assume control of the island. The Americans had fortified the island over the last 20 years into an impenetrable barrier, its coasts aligned with pillboxes and bunkers, and its inner fields plowed and lined with concrete to support the vast weight under the B 52 Stratofortress, the nuclear first strike capability of the Americans, which was pointed like a dagger at the heart of the Reich. It was a surprise to the German High Command when the Americans announced that they would be extending Iceland's exclusive economic zone, setting issues with the British fishing trawlers in the area. A plan was quickly drawn up to protest this thinly veiled attempt to seize the economic vi viability of the pact member. The Kriegsmarine will be mobilized in the North Sea to protect British trawlers from any transgressions. Verdien in Deutschland. A colder war, eh? Okay, we got six days left for that. Good. Only 250 factors, that's not enough. Turkish stand declared war and some other people, no one cares right now. And Schwerpunkt Tactics. The giant awakes. Oh, cool. Let's go ahead and grab Schwerpunkts. Combined, combined, combined blitz. And some better artillery. Pretty good. The giant awakes. Urgent to the office of the Reich's Minister of Foreign Affairs from the United States Secretary of State. Dear Reich's Minister Havel, today I write to you on behalf of my government on an important topic that has just come to light here in Washington. We've been made aware of the Kriegsmarine violating the new economic exclusion zone of our ally, Iceland. We request that you stop this pro provocative and dangerous action at once, or my government will be forced to respond in a way unfit for this new age to enforce our allies' waters. We warn you that we will be mobilizing our naval forces in the area to counter any aggressive moves by your government. We hope that you will see sense in our actions and requests and leave Icelandic waters to the Icelanders. Must American posturing pay no heed? Perhaps they have a point. The Eagle slouches? Uh, you know what, let's go with the first level. We'll see what happens. If it breaks into World War III, well, we'll see what... We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that then. Wow, we got a long time before the next uh, upgrade. Wow. That is a long, 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 long time. Alright. Doesn't matter though. Doesn't matter. So, at this point, we got to keep at least probably five in a stockpile. We are almost done with our land force. Level five is okay. It's not great. I actually tried with ten. Oh, backing down. Look at that. After the explosive confrontation in the North Atlantic, the news of both America and Germany were awash in speculations on a potential crisis. As it seemed, the cold, the cod waters were on the verge of spiraling not just into a full-blown international crisis, but into a full-scale war. This fear poured over the headlines of German-American newspapers alike, although the German papers painted over it with a code of patriotism. However, in the end, it seemed that the heat was too much to handle for the U.S. President Nixon has ordered an immediate withdrawal from the region, setting the cost of a potential war with the Reich. While this was certainly the better choice in terms of international tension, it costs the RDs back at home as much as it has benefited the NSDAP in Germany, as the MPP uses the crisis to rail against the perceived weakness of the President's administration. At the end of the day, however, the world breathes a sigh of relief, and the clock steps further away from midnight. Too close for comfort? Darn, we were successful. Kalk severely injured in the Kiev bombing. Troubling news from a troubled land. Kriegs Marine pressured. So be it. So be it. Yeah. Uh, the militarists intimidate the politicians next, regardless of race, creed, and ethnicity. Politicians are all like in one regard. They're all spineless, lying cowards. It's clear to the Reich's fear SS Hadrish that if we're to convince the Reich's politicians to join us in a crusade against the generous anti NSDAP settlement, we must use intimidation tactics. We shall return. To the olden days of intimidation that was successful decades prior as we first established our hold over the German nation. American spy plane intercepted yesterday Luftwaffe units base in northern England. Intercepted an American U-2 spy plane. Radar detected it approaching from the OFN Iceland base. HO-229 fighters were scrambled as all interceptors were undergoing routine maintenance. En route to interception, three of the four aircraft suffered engine difficulties and returned safely to base. The final aircraft piloted by the hero of the Reich, Albust Hellman Graf, entered missile range and fired. The American pilot, terrified of being shot down, immediately fled with his tail between his legs. Hal Graf, an ace pilot with over 300 confirmed kills in the Second World War, has proven once again the superiority of the Aryan race over the Yankee mongrels. Don't even think about coming back. Almost shot down, eh? Cool. And I will be right back. The economic mess. The economy has been on the downturn since the economic crash of the 50s. Many Germans who lost their jobs have remained un or underemployed and destitute for the better part of a decade now. Their only means of survival have hinged on the state continuing to provide them benefits. While the economy was crashing, many small business owners closed their doors for the last time. Major corporate interests throughout the country silently consolidated their holdings and bought properties, machinery, and expertise for next to nothing. German citizens were replaced with cheaper slave labor, and their jobs simply never returned. A decade later, wages still haven't returned to the pre-crash levels, even with 10 years of inflation for the few that still work. The German people yearn for some kind of action. We cannot be content to sit and watch our citizens suffer. Something must be done now to give the people much-needed much, some, much needed relief and hope. Unfortunately, it is up to decide 
how to best approach this. And we did win the Italo German Great Game. Turns one, three out of versus two, so whatever. And we also have no influence here. But Ahad has some fascinating ideas. More workers, armaments, factories, and people just need to trust the national socialism, or we need to return return to traditionalist living, yes. So now we're at this point where we have basically enough forts. Uh and I want to get this Oh, well, we can do that first of all. But we can do this one. I'm just going to go ahead and do strategic fort building. So in 30 days, we will have all these forts. And we will have the forts done, completed, and very, very nicely done. So now we're building up some... What is this? What is this? Uh, a synthetic refinery to get more rubber and more fuel. Get some radar stations and some more military factories because those will come in handy. Intimidate the politicians. Expel the ambassadors. To truly reclaim the right from degeneracy, we must exterminate all aspects of foreign influence from within his borders. In accordance with this message, we have no other choice but to expel the ambassadors of our opposition nation's states, who may eventually attempt to aid factions opposed to the SS as we continue to solidify our ever-expanding grip over the gross Germanic Reich. More stability and ideology def drift defense plus 5% for a whole two months. Not bad. So yeah, we're going to build up more factories here, because even though we'll take more factories across Germany here, we're definitely going to need more factories here. Early on, we don't start with that many factories. Wow, we just lost a lot of manpower there. Oof. So be it. Doesn't matter. Nice. Very good. Uh, I mean, let's see. Ooh, Italy was it Italo Turkish World? Well, good, good job, guys. Five, five, six, five, 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 five. This is not bad. I mean, if we have extra time, maybe we'll build up to like six or seven or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think level 5 and 6, especially defending over behind a river, is pretty darn good. Simru Golk wins Welsh elections? Well, good job, I guess. I don't know. Luxembourg. Oh, that's Burgundy. Okay. Oh, yeah, we can build on Burgundy, huh? Uh, let's see, how far does this extend? Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all we get. Of course, we do spawn with Hadrish over here as well, but we'll see what happens. We have absolutely no influence. Whatever. After this, shoot the libs. With the announcement of the Reichsführer SS Heydrich as a fierce successor, the low summoned degenerates of the liberal movement have decided to intensify the protests over the past few months. All of their attempts to halt the protests have been futile. Therefore, we must use more brutal methods. It's time that the Reich's liberals bite the non-proverbial bullet, and these traitors are to be put down like the dogs. They are. Spiel's call. Reinhold Heydrich stood over the tape recorder in absolute silence, his slender fingers laced together. Dr. Brandt's voice crackled a greeting, which Speer, Speer's deep monotone returned. Then came the grave announcement. The fear had fallen into a coma and was not likely to wake him. The tape soon clicked to an end. Hadrius took a deep breath and stoked the device, his mind adrift of the violent waves of indecision. The Fuhrer was on the cusp of death, and Speer was doubtless preparing for the inevitable. His clique of degenerates were not the largest sort of force. Bormann's corruption had brought him much support in the party, while Goring's pathetic weaknesses were per were, per 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 blah, 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 were perfect for his militarist puppet masters. The Schutzstaffel had prepared themselves, too, both militarily in mind for the upcoming war that would tear the Reich asunder and usher in a new age of national socialism. Even if the Reichstag declared Hadrich to be the next Führer, he would never be able to hold under Germania as a strategic position. Military preparations had to be made without hesitation or delay. He was torn from his thoughts by the ringing of the phone. Heil Hitler came to deep voice. The Reichsführer. I'm sure you'd agree that the Führer's absence from the public sphere has not gone unnoticed. Dr. Karl Brandt has served Hitler faithfully, and the only thing preventing a faster rate of recovery is Julius Schaub's interference. As the designated successor, you should remove him from his post immediately and publicly condemn him. You wish to scapegoat Schaub instead of Brandt? Hadrich considered for a moment. Very well. I'll kick that weasel from the party for good measure. Tell Bowman and Goring to condemn him too. We must focus on the public's attention on Herr Schaub, and away from Hitler, he thought. And the final curtain is... falling. So be it. We must do what we must do for the good of the people and the nation. Our report from Norway. News from Norway arrived today indicating that the Reichskommissar is planning to revitalize the Reichskommissar's farming and animal husbandry sector, likely to cement both its agricultural supremacy in the region and its trading relationship with the wider Reich. For centuries, Norway's labor market has been comprised of agric agricultural jobs and related fields, and its continuation in the modern era has translated to a lowered food cost in the Scandinavian peninsula. While such outputs, uh, output mostly serves to meet the population's needs and pales in comparison to other heavy farming regions such as the Ukrainian breadbasket, Norway's continual investment has managed to curb incidents of famine as well as both a respectable export market. Calling this development news is perhaps a step too far, as for the vast majority of Norway's citizens as well as the people of the Einheits Pact itself. There will not be a noticeable be there will not be a noticeable difference in their lives. Work will continue, space 
and there will be further gradual advancements in the yield and fertility, and all while, the people of Scandinavia will not have to fear going to sleep on an empty stomach. Also, the benefits of food, this will solidify our trade network with them and further make Norway dependent on German exports and capital. A final foundation for the Reich's future growth. Carry on. Unfortunately, uh, Hitler is comatose, and we have no influence, but whatever. We will deal with, or deal with the hand that we are dealt. Uh, does anyone else need to train ships? It doesn't really matter in the end, but we'll train ships anyways. As if we don't get fuel, then no one can have fuel. Let's see, you guys. A little bit of lag. Nope. Operating? Cool. Keep training. Keep training. Ah, look for opportunities. SS acting up. The shoot off are once again stirring up trouble within the Reich. While this isn't exactly uncommon or new, the shoot off couldn't have chosen a worse time to recon recommence, them their, recommence their usual tactics. All across Germany and the SS, they've been putting their ho noses in where it doesn't belong, creating a great deal of disruption throughout the Reich. Stormtroopers have bullied troops from the regular army out of several armies across Germany, mostly concentrated in the Rhine. Several brawls between them and the Hay have also been reported. The SS are also disrupting flight schedules in order to screen pilots and passengers, even from the Luftwaffe. This is a thin veil to harass them and nothing more, and shouldn't be mistaken as anything else. They have felt the need to make the presence known to the civilian population as well, carrying out their own investigations to the citizens' population. Anything ranging from foreign spy to tax invasion has been used ex as an excuse to detain and harass people. They even have the backbone to set up checkpoints with no approval from anyone but themselves and have been able to freely arrest suspected Jews and other undesirables, who are more than often not critics of the SS. With these fanatics causing so much chaos, some kind of action must be decided on soon to limit their activities and restore some semblance of sanity. Root out the SS influence? Resist them? Restrict them? Excellent! All according to plan as we bring more divisions or regiments to our side. Beautiful. It is what must be done. It has to be done. Because as I said before, we need a lot of divisions just to help hold the line. Because Hadrish, he's not given a lot of gifts, we'll say, unlike some other people. And of course we're shooting the libs. Go figure. So his power is low. Oh, but there's, they're going the wrong way. Oh, and there goes Madagascar. Robert Gill, an air traffic controller in Newcastle, noticed one of the dots on his screen had begun to move from its original direction quite suddenly. One moment, it had been following a straight line to the east, and the next, it seemed to be headed northwest. This caught the, his attention, and he immediately raised questions to his supervisor. They looked it up, and got the name of the flight, Lufthansa 302, a Junker 152 flying from London to Bergen. Newcastle tried to contact Lufthansa 302 and asked them what they were doing. Lufthansa 302 did not respond. They tried raising the plane several more times on frequent, different frequencies that civil airlines in the pack frequently used. Nothing. Lufthansa 302 either couldn't or outright refused to respond. The flight was still headed towards the northwest. A sudden change in direction and a refusal to communicate led the flight control to one conclusion. Newcastle reported to London they believed Lufthansa 302 had been hijacked, assailants unknown. H London was shocked and ordered all outgoing flights temporarily halted as they tried to get a handle on how bad the situation was. Berlin was informed within an hour. An alarms went off as they tried to scramble fighters to intercept the aircraft. Lufthansa was horrified, and gave a list of people who had, brought, who had bought the tickets, English, Germans, and Norwegians. Oslo was informed that some of their citizens were involved in a potential hijacking after that. They scrambled to find out where the plane was headed, trying to utilize the, Airfoff, the Luftwaffe to make contact. The pact tried to gather all their diplomatic envoys and intelligence assets in Scotland and the OFN to find out what was going on. All the intelligence they had on Himmler was pouring over to find a possible connection, some hint of the aircraft's plans, but they still had no idea, and all they could do was watch Lufthansa 302's dot eventually fly off the edge of Newcastle's radar, soon moving to the northwest. We can only hope and pray for their safety. So, yeah. Collapsed German Madagascar, expanded the draft, overextended Air Force, rampant factionalism, reduced half budget, influencers for the militarists, acted against the SS, and the mystery of Lufthansa 302. The first news of the pact received related to the Lufthansa 302 since it dropped off of the Newcastle radar was a news report in Scotland. A Junker 152 had landed in Aberdeen, it said, and the hijackers had given themselves up to the Scottish authorities. Germany immediately contacted Scotland through diplomatic channels, demanding the hijackers be deported to the pact, and the passengers and crew be allowed to return home as well. A few hours later, Scotland responded with a flat no to any extradition, and it said that the aircraft had been allowed to continue to, to Bergen. When the aircraft arrived in Bergen that night, the passengers were taken by the Gestapo and asked to relay everything they saw or heard. It wasn't much to go on. A man or woman pulled guns out over the North Sea and demanded the aircraft return and go to Scotland. They didn't declare any specific affiliations with any group or make statements in support of an ideology. Regrettably, several English and Norwegian citizens had agreed to stay behind in Scotland along with them. Then came the digging through all the reports and the records. 
The hijackers were English citizens suspected of attempting to purchase transport through the Scottish border and were being looked at when the hijacking occurred. Many in the pack, especially on the security side, weren't satisfied. There had to be a resistance component to it, they thought. They interrogated and detained close relations to other hijackers and defectors, but they were just as shocked as everyone else. The English resistance didn't seem to step up their activity after the attack, and no other copycat hijackings occurred at the same time. As much as some didn't like it, the task of Lutanza, or the taking of the plane, appeared to be a result of a desperate pair of disaffected English, and not part of the wider terrorist plot against the Reich. That can't be right, can it? Let's see. Influence is high. Ooh, artillery. Anti tank stuff. Nice. Oh, the militarists. Ooh, yeah, it's going up. 60s armigrant. Armigrant? Armament upgrade? Uh, let's not do anti air equipment. That'd be okay for now. Marines. Artillery. We can't do any more. We're doing that as fast as we possibly can. Helicopter stuff. Ooh, maybe. External fuel tanks. Drop tanks are pretty good to get. Politician silence. Good. Well, it's over now, but whatever. Shoot the libs. I just want to cut down on that debt, man. Of course, where we're going doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Only minus 3% war support. Not bad. This is all the Reichstag next. The Reichstag, the diet of the gross Germanische Reich. As a continual thorn in the side of the Reichsfuhrer SS, Heydrich, and the Schutzstaffel as a whole. Given how it's a representative body, it has the power to directly influence and challenge a government, something which its members aren't afraid to do, as shown with the Diet's opposition to Herr Heydrich's appointment. Therefore, if we are to truly control the Reich, we must dissolve the Reichstag as it's no longer necessary, oftentimes disrupting the work of government. Black market luxury trading increases. It's been brought to our attention that the domestic black market activity has increased. The criminal syndicates in charge begin selling luxury goods to the population. However, this is not a wholly bad thing, as an increase in available products lessens the strain on our own civilian industries. <laughs> and we just get, okay. Ah, the Yusuda Crisis. Very good. What falls faster, a man or shares? Nice. A few extra factories won't hurt. Uh, actually, that's all, quite a few more factories we're making. You know what? Do one more. How fast can we make this? Oh, that's going to take literally two months to make. You know what? That's okay. We'll make the sixth one here. But then... Yeah, military factories... Hmm... I mean, we'll be good on guns. Like, don't get me wrong. We'll be pretty good on guns for a while. Uh, so, when we, when we get to the Civil War, my goal is to take out Shapiro first. Actually, first is just defend. Because attacks are going to be crazy. Defend. If they don't attack, then we'll take out Köln. Or Cologne. Set up defensive positions across the Rhine here. And then break over to Essen. Because that'll be the capital, I think. That or... I think Dortmund becomes the capital. And we'll snake our way up north... And then encircle, destroy, while keeping an eye on how much territory we take and victory points, because we have to keep in mind about the anti Hadrish pact that everyone else will get if we are too successful. So. Military austerity, good. Boom, boom, thank you. Increases, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I really don't care. Half a million manpower, not bad. It is May 1st, 63. And does all the Reich stag? Rubicon. The orders were curt, simple, and precise. They came into flurry throughout, through official and unofficial channels, flooding the Reichstag with a contradictory sense of liberation and fear. Bureaucrats and politicians milled around like a dying haze. There was little else to do. The new Führer had not bothered to give a pompous speech or issue a formal announcement. A new Germany was in the making, and he couldn't afford to be distracted by the egos of irrelevant relics from a decadent era. They served no benefit towards the creation of a true Aryan state, and so they did not matter. This new truth took slightly longer to reach the collective indignation of the Reichstag. The blood corpse of a dead republic clung so desperately to its, ex its existence, as though it hadn't already ceased to ex exist three decades ago. Inexorably, however, reality fell to the floor for all to see. By order of the Führer, the Reichstag is dissolved and effective immediately. Detente with Burgundy. Over the past few decades, relations between the the Reich and the Burgund, Oldenshaw Burgund, have been strenuous to say at least. Yep, with the appointment of the Reichsfuhr SS Heydrich as the Führer's successor upon death. It's clear to us that it's only right that we make pers and pursue friendlier relations with the Burgundians, and therefore we shall enact a policy of detente with Oldenstadt Burgund, thus paving the way for a renewal of once friendly relations. Get more legitimacy, and guarantee them, and they guarantee us. I love guaranteeing each other. Look for opportunities. Military budget review. After the Second World War, or well, the Second Valkyrie, the German military bore no rival. Our military spending was second to none, as was our might. We proved the world our strength by accomplishing what many considered impossible. We retained tight control of our conquests. Then expanded our empire even more by occupying the middle, entire middle section of the Dark Continent. 
Since then, we've spent the better part of two decades crushing army after army of partisans as well as all Russian invasion. The economic collapse of the 50s made the burden of maintaining the Herald's budget a titanic struggle. Although many begged for funds to be funneled elsewhere, Hitler stood by the Wehrmacht and would not hear of it. Therefore, for the last two decades, Germany had somehow miraculously maintained its military budget, for better or for worse without another major economic crisis. Militarists in both the Wehrmacht and administration continue to lobby to maintain current spending to this day. On the other side of this aisle, a coalition of reformers, civilian interests, industrialists, and even limited numbers of conservatives from the NSDAP beg us to cut the Wehrmacht's budget for as much needed allocation of funds elsewhere. Being in a position of power ourselves, combined with Hitler's ailing health, now allows us to make a change in policy if we chose. We invest in the economy. Enemies grow stronger every day. The budget remains. Funnel more money to the SS. You bet your booty. Your hindquarters, we will. More divisions. Well, Bowman's influence is pretty high. Goring's is pretty high. Spiel's is pretty high. But no one even notices Hadrish for now. Which is okay. We need more stability. Oh, we have only 26% stability, eh? Yeah, that's alright. That is A-OK. -okay. Oh, commenced blitz. Spiel points. Planned assaults. Max planning, reinforcement, max planning. I like less supply consumption, but we're going to focus on tanks. Adaptive command training, pretty good. Followed with... Actually, what are we going to get? Recon? Let's get maintenance companies. That would be actually good for our soldiers, because some of our soldiers will already have them on them. So, muy bueno. Thank you. Detente. So, low, good. Still very high, but that's fine. Oh, he's a fly boy, a politician, a blowhard, and a power-hungry... Can you imagine having a portrait of yourself like that? Man, that'd be kind of wild if you actually had a portrait of yourself like that. And with your name underneath, too, I just realized that. How's Russia looking? Broken, as they should. Tomsk is looking nice and purple. Look at them. Social. Ah, Shostakovich. Vyatka, Komi, anything else here? Amalon. Not too much else. Student school, as they should be. And soon enough, in about a little more, more in a month, we'll have research done and end travel restrictions or stop the sanctions. We'll stop the restrictions first. Due to the formerly hostile leadership of the Gross Germanisches Reich attempting to counter Burgundian ambitions, unfair trade sanctions with, were placed upon trade with Oldenstadt Bogen, which ultimately resulted in their economy weakening. However, this will not continue for long. To truly establish cordiality between the Reich and the Burgundy, we have little choice but to lift all sanctions upon the state, thus alleviating Burgundy's economic woes and resulting in a strengthening of ties between us and our party comrades abroad. Very good. Very, very good. God, I gotta play as these African states someday. Now, oh, he's got what looks, appear to be, painted on facial hair, but okay. Shink. Oh, look how happy Muller is. He looks so happy. That makes me happy. And, oh god, this guy's ugly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to say it. Hutig, I know he has funny hair and all, but I, I'll be honest, I kind of prefer his older portraits. Hopefully they're still in the game, but we'll see what happens. And more hair regiments. We already have 15,000 in reserve, that's fine. Military contracts, I might do that, but it doesn't really matter since we're already building up a lot of military factories here already. So, I mean, we're doing really, really well already, so. And we're building us even more forts, so we're doing really, really well. We have radar, we've got even another refinery for a little bit, slightly more fuel, slightly more rubber. I think we're doing great. In fact, I might even get another one. Actually, maybe... Actually, you know what? Let's get a... I never do this. Let's get a fuel silo. I never do this. How long does it take? August 12th? That's not too bad. Good. Yeah, but yeah, I figured that this is one of the longest videos I've done just because I want to get through all this stuff first so that the next episode we can focus solely on the civil war that'll happen because that's going to take time. That's going to take some serious time. No difference in here, right? State oppression of minorities? Well, I guess that makes sense. Let's see. Drop tanks. Improved jet fighters, sure. And let's get some better casts as well. Because I love casts. Ikeda elected Prime Minister of Japan. Oh, status quo wins again. Look for opportunities. Veterans demand their share. Millions of German soldiers were rewarded after a glorious victory in the Second World War. Our troops, or loyal troops, oversaw the creation of the greatest empire the world has yet seen. It was therefore only fitting to reward them accordingly. Many veterans were given lands to settle portions of power, or positions of power and influence, prestige, and more than their fair share of wealth. This was easy enough to handle following the days of our great victory. This has set a precedent of entitlement, though. Yet another generation of soldiers are retiring, and there isn't nearly the amount of wealth to go around. There simply hasn't been any new conquest. Still, they expect and even demand the same compensation the heroes of the last war were 
uh, gifted. Even the men who haven't seen a lick of battle. The most vocal of the new veterans were the last of our men to see the real war, the veterans of the West Russian conflict. There's no doubt that they suffered greatly to hold back the tide of reds that rats that threatened Muscovine, and therefore only ask for their fair share. It's time we hand over retirement benefits once and for all, so we can finally end the debate of what the veterans are due. Times are different now. It is their right. And in blood. Or not blood, you know. It'd be kind of cool. I actually just thought of if someone could make a mod detailing the West Russian War to see the collapse of the you know Soviet Union. That'd be really cool if, there was, if we could have like a mod like that. A sub-mod for TNO. A pre-sub-mod, which is getting kind of wild. But end travel restrictions. To truly improve Burgundian-German relations, we must end all draconian restrictions placed upon the nation over the past several years. The most glaring restriction is probably the odd travel restrictions between the Reich and the Western Puppet, restricting who can rightfully enter Himmler's kingdom. Now that Herr Heidrich's influence in the government is secure, we shall end said restrictions, thus allowing all Germans to travel freely between the Reich and Burgundy. Good. And hopefully they give us... Actually, we already have access to them probably already. Do we? We probably should. Yeah, we do. That is a very good thing. Uh, too bad our economy's not growing nearly as much as we'd like it to. That's alright. We're doing very well here. We're, how many military factories do we have? How many do we have around here? We have a lot. Wow. We literally have almost no room. Well, I guess we still have some room. We'll build civilian factories later on. Oh, wait. Th these are civilian factories we're building. Oh, I should be able to build military. I thought we were building military factories. Whoopsie. Alright, let's finish this out with more military factories then. I don't even care that we lost a couple days. That's my fault. Oh my goodness, that is my fault. Hey, I'm thinking about the economy anyways. But these shouldn't be too bad to build. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be kind of bad to build. My bad. That was my fault. I completely didn't realize that. Oh well. And more regiments. Honestly, it won't even matter. As long as we take more, more states during the Civil War, we'll get more factories. We'll have enough equipment anyways. The most important thing to get is infantry equipment, which we'll have enough of by capitulating Speer and stuff like that. So I'm really not worried about it too much. We got the forts. That's what matters. What really matters is when the war starts is that the enemies drain themselves and we can actually hold our lines. So, whatever. That was my fault, though. But I guess, technically, when the war does start, we will be able to hold the line a little bit better. Or, you know, we will be able to build stuff, I guess. And actually, using civilian factories, we'll be able to trade away resources. So that'll be good. Yeah, that was my fault. Oh, hell, Mocha Lover. You crazy, crazy person. And travel restrictions and re Burgundian reinforcements. And you know what? Let's uh, go on as, as we read, read this. With the internal struggle of the Reich quickly deteriorating despite our efforts to, to the contrary, it seems as if our only hope to secure the Reich for the Hadrish person lies with Hal Himmler's fiefdom. We must call upon our Burgundian allies for support. Given a recent relaxation in policy towards Altenstadt Burgund, Hal Himmler will surely assist us in claiming the Reich for the Schustoffel once and for all. A report from Norway, though. From the Executive Office of the Reichskommissar at Novigen. To the four Federal Foreign Office of the Great Gross Germanisches Reich regarding unsanctioned civilian propaganda. As noted, as noted in previous communications, domestic resistance elements have been spreading illegal viral propaganda within the Reichskommissariat in response to the Reichskommissar has authorized all available state capacity to investigate, locate, and neutralize unsanctioned civilian propaganda. To this end, the Reichskommissariat garrison, state security agencies, and local and federal police support forces have been organized and dispatched to secure the cultural safety of the citizens of the Reichskommissariat in the beginning. Domestic subversive group designated Milorg is identified as a propagator of the aforementioned cultural sabotage and has been further labeled as our highest priority for apprehension and neutralization. Additionally, urban centers will be receive will receive higher concentrations of public monitoring and citizen investigation. A key few is being considered, but in the interim, citizens will be required to record the activities for presentation to a security investigator upon request. Furthermore, movement across the Rex Commissariat will only be authorized for vehicles including, but not limited to, registered state vehicles, garrison vehicles, military vehicles, supply and transportation vehicles, Vehicles containing a certified state agent of Rex Commissar Navigan, vehicles containing a certified state agent of the Rex of the Reich, and undercover collection of vehicles. See attached file A1 for details. Acknowledged. Very good. Hopefully we have and things don't go poorly for us. Hopefully we don't have the Civil War before at least one of these is built. That's completely my fault. I apologize once again. It's just, oh my goodness. I was so focused on building stuff. I'm so used to clicking on civilian factories. Oh, yeah, actually, that hurts our fuel game from refineries. Oh, no wonder we're losing fuel from these guys. Yeah, see, you see, minus, from our refineries, minus 696. But that's just building. So if we don't build any more military, fa military factories, we get more fuel, which is good to keep in mind when we're actually at war, so. October 20th. We have a little bit more than a month to build these. 
Hopefully Hitler does not die between now and then. We'll see what happens. Opportunities. Unemployment on the rise for everyday German. Gainful employment is incredibly hard to come by. Nearly all sectors of the German economy, agriculture, manufacturing, and even construction are glutted. Dominated by slave labor, uneducated Germans are hard-pressed to find jobs forcing them to survive on state welfare. This has made labor involving higher education super competitive and even our best and brightest and biggest struggle to find jobs. The situation only worsens year after year with no solution in sight. There are simply not enough private sector jobs to go around. The German economy needs a major overhaul, with the first to being to address a dismiss dismissal state of German employment. While we could certainly just conscript more men to drop unemployment or increase benefits and payouts, it may be prudent to start phasing out slave labor and returning these jobs to the civilian sector, even if it is at the expense of the industrialists. Well, they deserve nothing. And the strong will of Sevilla. And I'm going to... I said we might do this one. Nah. More regiments. More. Tons of regiments. Tons, tons, tons more. We're looking pretty good on the national debt. The growth of our GDP is not bad. Could be much better. But hey, not bad. And it looks like we're pretty much done with our Pope Street now. We're less than a week and we'll be finished. Oh, poor Daddy Hitler. Gold ring. Oh, he. Oh, he. Of course, he's a crooked kleptocrat. We didn't talk about the national spirits at all. The banished want. The two principles, of course. Burgundian reinforcements. Free trade was often seen as a sign of opening the, up to the world around the nation, expanding economic and cultural horizons. This was as anything but. Every night, a caravan of trucks approached the German border from Burgundy. The drivers could hardly be seen through the tinted windows, but a keen-sighted observer would universally see men wearing dark sunglasses, wearing heavy coats. They transported unknown cargo, nuclear weaponry, poison for the masses, toiletries. No one knew, especially because they were usually quite a quiet through the border guards, waved anyone in the particular Burgundian truck without a second thought, and the trucks just kept coming on in. For the first time, however, Burgundy was opening up. They were sending their terrible cargo into Germany. Worse still, when the trucks finally entered the Reich proper, they always ended up at the Schutzstaffel offices and cities with the most of support for the newly appointed successor. Soon enough, there were reports of extravagant SS celebrations, especially made Burgundian champagne and some of whatever cargo was in those trucks. Cities supporting Hadrich saw an ever so slight uptick in economic performance. Just at the moment, those trucks began to drive in. Some west of the border were playing favorites. For boarding, to say the least. And we're pretty much out of focuses until something bad happens to, uh, the country. Let's take a look. Uh, minus three billions, not bad. And what's going on down here? Militarstadt, Militarstadt Madagascar. Not bad. Led by Milch, Mr. Milk. Iberia is doing some stuff. And they have the Schwarze Pest. Catastrophe. Ca catastrophic. Sacrifices to be made. Oberschafer Blöcher was three minutes late as Hedrisch's watch told him. Something simply unacceptable for an officer of, the S of his SS. His men were to be early, 15 minutes at the least, an hour at the usual, but to be late? The man was only lucky that Hedrisch had summoned him for duties deemed important by Herr Himmler. He was unlucky enough that those duties would get him killed. Sieg, Sieg Heil, the man snapped at with or out with a salute that to anyone else would have been perfect, but the hand sag at the last moment was enough to show laziness or exhaustion to it made no matter. You have orders. Oba Schaffer, Adrisch answered after several long moments, letting his icy stare deep into a man like cold water, one given to us by our benefactor to the West. Give me the order, Herr Hedrisch, the man paused as the continued silence before swallowing, continuing. I I apologize for my tardiness. I'll skip on my duties. One of my men was enough, Hedrisch answered, unmoving. He let exactly 15 seconds pass before continuing. I smell the stench of cigarettes, unbecoming of a national socialist male, especially of a member of the SS. It does not matter, however. You will make up for it soon. He raised one hand, and the guard by the door shut Oba Shafia blush at the back of the head. Your sacrifice for the greater good will be the redemption you need. How degenerate. Smoking? Smelling of cigarettes? <sighs> Another good man wasted. So, it's October 1st, and moves to be made in silence. Oba Shafia blush well, Blusha had been a suitable sacrifice, a dedicated and loyal man of the SS, but one with too many faults to ignore. His time in Poland had softened him, for while he did everything he had been asked to do, he had come to loathe it. The man had started smoking soon after and drinking, though both in moderation. To calm his nerves, he and many other soldiers would say, Hadrish knew that this just meant a heart of cowardice, sympathy for the Untermensch. Still, he had been loyal, and his men had seen him as a model leader, saying, always on their side, always looking out for them above all. Another sign of weakness, but at least one that almost embodied the Aryan ideal. That made it almost a shame that... Approximately 16 minutes ago, the staff car had been met an empty road that night. His body was to be dumped near Koblenz. Shot through the head by a Wehrmacht-issued pistol in an alley on a street known to be frequented by military men on their nights off. Hedrisch didn't smile, but he took grim satisfaction in the plan. The fruition of his master's orders, at least implicitly. Tomorrow, there would soon be blood on the streets and on the Wehrmacht's hands. When possessed by the worm, it was almost pathetically trivial to bait a fish. We're getting quite a bit of political power here. A little bit of lag, and that's okay. 
God, I want more. The hook sinks. Six hours, 14 minutes, and 43 seconds ago, a body had been found in an alley, his men told him. 23 minutes, or 27 minutes after it was successfully identified by the Opal, with the assistance from the SD, that the man had been a member of the SS. 40, 40 after, and Ward had leaked that it had been murdered by a young Wehrmacht man named Hans Friestig, who found himself promptly beaten within an inch of his life, and then, four hours and ten minutes ago, was shot by the SS Sturmann Ludwig Menz, a boy who saw the deceased SS member as a father figure. Three hours ago, on the dot, when the second past ten, the Wehrmacht responded by assaulting an SS barracks for the boy. The Reichstag predictably fell into chaos and condemned the Wehrmacht for the murder. One hour and eleven minutes ago, Koblenz burned, and the clock past midday. He just knew that so too would Germany, and when they are possessed of the mind and the spirit of an animal, it is only too easy to make them act as prey. At least just give me my regiments. That's the that's what we need at the very minimum. At the very minimum we know we need all regiments. Nice. And hopefully we'll at least we'll have one, maybe two military factories before the war breaks out. Which is fine. We're still building up more forts too, so I'm not really worried about this. Like ants, they swarm. Three thousand rifles, forty seven tanks, nine helicopters, and two thousand men. So far as drawn dawn tickled forward, that is what had been reporting missing from the barracks and motor pools across the Reich. Across highways and barracks and back roads. Armored cars, proudly emblazoned with the twain, twin lightning bolts of the SS, rolled towards destinations unknown. Others were unmarked, moving silently through open towns past the roadblocks of the army. In Koblenz and Nuremberg, Munich and Jena and or Jena, and Chemnitz and war, and the world burned. SS meant exacted bloody revenge. Wehrmacht did in kind, the people were just caught in the middle. The black dots of the SS vehicles moved towards battle, and many more moved elsewhere. With the chaos of the scorched earth, none could notice the swarm. They moved into their nests crawled into their hides, and soon they waited, soon a king would fall. Soon, as the days would cross off, and hours and minutes dutifully looked forward, the world changed. They crawled into the dark from which a new dawn will rise. Seems like things are heating up. Very good. Autumn. He lies cat catatonic on his deathbed, alone except for the physician seated his side. Outside the room lie one hundred million souls in terrible waiting, yet his consciousness is an empty bliss beyond the world. His life flashes by him in reverse. He recalls her funeral, how his heart broke, and only his reverence to his motherland remained. The Cathedral of Light, during the victory parade after the war, the long conquest against the Judeo-Bolshevism, he mercilessly fought. The world's power and awe of Germany at the Olympic Games, he struggled to break the old order with blood and steel. The house of his parents were first dreamed, dreamed to all and all dreams. The stream ended with one final shot of morphine, his eyes worn from the injection. He looks around as if searching for something. Behind the sliver of illuminance left in between the curtains, he sees a Volkshalle bathed in sunlight. He stares at the dome for some time, trying to remember Deutschland before he hears a whisper, the only voice he truly ever loved. He shifts his gaze, and for a fleeting moment, she was there, his apparition fading. He whispers his last word, a single tear is welling in his eyes. Eva? There were no sounds for a while, except for the faint serration. Susurrating of the oak leaves and the chirping of barn swallows. The news of Adolf Hitler's passing came after one hour of peace. There will never be again silence for the children of Germania. Farewell, mein Fuhrer. The death of Hitler. With the uncovering and destruction of the bugging of devices in the Berghof, Heydrich had used every means at his disposal to find out more about Hitler's medical state. The old man was unlikely to wake from his coma, of that he was certain. The question was, then, would he die? The rumors had spread like wildfire, first through Germania, then the Reich at large. Politicians discussed it, medical experts debated it, and the common citizen was theorizing it. The same words were on everyone's lips, the fear was dead. The excitement that coursed through Heydrich's veins was tinged with a slight sadness. The memories of what Hitler had become were just as vivid as the memories of what he had become. Of what he had become and what now he had become. The generation of the Reich could not re be arrested at the feet of the senile old man, after all. It was a corruption of Bormann, Goring, Speer, and many others that destroyed the Fatherland many years ago. Without question, history would recall the fear as a great man of his history, and it would be for Heydrich, or Reinhard Heydrich as well. The minutes turned to hours. The hours grew today. Soon, the rumors had become fact. The fear was dead. The Reich was officially leaderless. I see it. Hadrish muttered into the phone, replying to the voice's claims. He placed the phone gen down gently, restraining the urge to pound it against the table until it shattered into a million pieces. The Reichstag had just been met without inviting the appointed successor. The pestilence infected the emergency council and refused to legally pronounce Hadrish as a new Fuhrer, claiming that now was the time for murdering and not ceremony. Germania had slipped through his fingers, but it mattered a little. According to his spies, Goring, Speer, and Hadrish had already fled the city. There was no time to lose. The road to leadership would be painted red with blood of his enemies. Extensive military preparations had already been made. It was time to fly west. No, never to send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee, an epish. Hadrish sat in his office, stared ahead, letting the familiar ticking guide his thoughts. His office was bare, as was befitting to a man of the SS, and only his own mind could rightfully take his action. <clears throat> The clicking, clacking of boots down the hall let him know that within 10 minutes or 10 or 15 steps and 4 seconds, 
Weeks later, Buller would arrive to tell the news Operation Ludwig would be, for there were no alternative, a success. His mind raced for a moment a pathetic, insidious loss of control that he quickly quelled. He remembered the old man. He remembered the coup. He remembered the, his only crisis of faith. He laughed as he had, as he had given when Hadrish informed him that he was to be under Asa's protection. The moment he realized that such an order was impossible. The moment he understood the level of his fury to Herr Himmler. The moment he would redeem himself for. A knock at the door, a greeting and salute. No, how Hitler? Not anymore. Bula gave, gave him a nod as he finished the report. That the Fuhrer was to be rushed to the hospital. That the causes could only be natural. Hadrich stood, carefully folded his arms behind his back. It was about time to leave. Herr Bula, work is to be done. A day to remember, Mr. Mustache Man. What about the uh, liquid reserves, though? A funeral for the Fuhrer. The funeral for Adolf Hitler was possibly the largest and most extravagant in history. Thousands of Germans stood in attendance with nearly an entire division of soldiers just for the funeral alone march. For the funeral march. Not to mention endless flyovers from the Luftwaffe and the constant jockeying for the best spots to show off over a dozen military units. Even standout figures such as JFK and a representative of Emperor Hirohito were in attendance. Heldrich, Speer, Goring, and Bowman were all in attendance and all gave the word on the leader's passing. Today is a day of mourning. Crisis has struck Germany. We must be strong in the coming days together for the entire Reich. Now is the time for healing. And then they were gone. Not even half an hour after the body was lowered, four staff cars and convoys were speeding off to parts unknown, preparing for plans, no doubt, just only the beginning. That was quite abrupt. And it is now October 21st, in which now we have successfully made at least two more military factories. Mission accomplished. The flock takes flight. Since the death of Hitler, the Luftwaffe has begun to act awry. The great jet birds begin to fly without command across many areas of the Reich. Airfields vacate as seemingly every air wing in the Luftwaffe undertakes a great migration for their destination yet unknown. The strange flocking habits of these Luftwaffe birds is not restricted to just aircraft. Fallschirmjäger divisions, too, load up their equipment and personnel into the aircraft with an unwarranted haste and soar off into destinations unknown. Luftwaffe personnel seem to be in the midst of an utter abandonment of post countrywide, with only a scarce few commanders planting their contingents firm upon their assigned airfields. As Field Marshal Speidel frantically attempts to officially re uh, to ascertain the status of the Luftwaffe, motorcades in Germania are seemingly filled with their top brass, leaving their offices for personal reasons, pre planned leave, or simply leave departing Berlin with so much as a word to the superior. Spado may not have the official status of the dilemma on hand, yet there's no doubt in the minds that any of this work is old Reich Marshal Goring. His pieces and plans are soon to be put in place. Heiling the Reich. The Reich stands or sits in a state of confusion now. For the past week, the Reichstag has been at one another's throats over the simple matter of who the citizens of the Reich should hail now that the Fuhrer is dead. While it was always assumed that the next Fuhrer would be saluted, the current chaos and any lack of real planning for this crisis meant that the German people have, left in, have been left in a state of utter confusion as the Reichstag has bickered and the more ideologically minded hailed their chosen candidate for the office. Soldiers hiled the generals or their home cities. Citizens hiled workers and the economy. Some even still hiled Hitler. It seems as if every German had decided on their own special salute, and no one liked another one. By the end of the week, Heil the Reich had become the most agreed upon salute by the people of Germany, but no one seems particularly enthused about it anymore. Can we agree on nothing? Of course not. It's just politics. It's just the Reich. And we finished maintenance companies and adoptive training, or adaptive training. Recon it is. As well as. Mission Type Tactics. Very good, my friends. The hell acting strange. Across the country, men from the hell band in the post, some division roles called, have been reported half or even sometimes more of the men going AWOL. In a couple instances, entire infantry and panzer divisions have simply disappeared off the map, not only to reappear across the country in southern Germany. No ex exclamation or explanation can be shaken from the officers or generals of these divisions since they are either nowhere to be found or hidden away in the black spot of South Germany. To make matters worse, late last night, the general staff in Berlin vanished. A convoy of personal cars and military trucks filled with high-ranking officials and their attachments were last seen heading south after picking up the troops at our checkpoints. There is little doubt that they are also heading south. Hail messengers rung amok in Germania, and formations all across Germany are suddenly leaderless and further disintegrating. From one particularly burnt layer, an aide managed to dig up alongside a couple of tapped phone recordings, reveal common, simple phrase from Martin Bowman himself, it is time. Bowman is making a move. One that will not aid the Reich. Heydrich, or a gamer, rises up. As a wave of violence continues throughout Germany, Heydrich has declared himself the rightful heir Führer of Germany. Well, hey, Hitler did, you know, put him, or appoint him as a successor. This is not news from him, but what is news is the fact that he's called upon the SS to restore order within the country. Forces of the SS base in Elsass Lothlundgren, conveniently close to the border with Burgundy and Ostpreuz in the strongest support areas of support, have stormed local police stations and administrative buildings with full intent of taking over all of Germany. Thanks to the absolute state of the Reich, however, we can do nothing. It has begun Dawn of the Black Sun in the Reichstag. Twelve representatives found themselves drinking cyanide, rubbing hands on arsenic, or finding themselves strangled by thin wires in the dark corners. 
In the nearby vendor block, a truck smashed through the gates and in the front of the lobby. The bomb blast approximately 1.2 mg in size, tore half the building center to the ground and killed four different senior Wehrmacht officials with their staff. Along and across Germany, the SS stepped out of the dark. They took over the post office and roadblocks and barracks, and they scattered the Wehrmacht to the countryside and began their grim work. As so, called the pretenders to his throne, reel from the confusion, they sliced away like a trained butcher. Before them, the fat of Germany was minced away. Hadrius's car hit the third bump and the long road to his new headquarters, and in, he knew, even without looking into the window, he had just arrived. The war was beginning, but to Hadrius, it was just beginning of yet of another plan to inevitably finish to only the exact standard, exacting standards of the Aryan ideal. Let them no fear, for we bring forth a new day. Speerens rise up after the recent chaos in the Reich. Speerens' divisions loyal to him have begun a rebellion in the northwest of Germany. Armed students began taking over the government building in the area, and students' uprisings have been reported throughout the country. Our country now continues to crumble as the first sparks of the civil war have been lit. Speer yet. And... Goring rises up. As the streets begin to fill with the sounds of war and forces loyal to each container begin armed insurrection, Hedman Goring is called upon loyal legions to stamp out rebellion within the nation, but starting his own. About half the country's local total land masses have declared themselves loyal to him, and his forces now begin to open battle against this loyal militiamen and the rest of the contenders. Would Hitler would have wanted that? Eh, maybe. Bormann breaks away. The Reich, once a triumphant victor, has collapsed into outright civil war. The fact that this is confirmed earlier today is Bormann, rather reluctantly, ordered the remaining forces loyal to him to fully break away from the Reich and begin to warfare and begin warfare against the rest of the contenders for the fear. Our eagles have fallen. God help uns. Oh, look at the annual deficit. The civil war begins. Well, tensions have been rising between the various factions in the Reich for years. Nobody quite expected the explosion of violence that came shortly after the death of the Fuhrer. Everyone had seen, of course, the politicians scattering to their homes, the military ar arming themselves and locking down roads, the police taking up their heaviest weapons and barricading their stations, but for now, right, civil war? Expect it or not, however, the war is here. Military units have focused their attention on Germania, ensuring the capital remains under military control. But elsewhere, the pretenders to the throne and the Reich have armed themselves and fighting is broken out across Germany. Speer, Heydrich, Bormann, Goring. No one knows which one will win, but all the people of the nation know that the dark days are ahead of them. With Germany in collapse and anarchy in the streets, foreign powers have already begun debating on what to do. The U.S. and Japan have already begun looking into how best to exploit the chaos, and Iberia and Italy have begun militarizing in order to carve out further influence in the chaos. Lex Commissariats, ostensibly loyal vassals of the Reich, sit in chaos as well, their leaders debating on who to support, or whether or not it is time to begin distancing their realms from the homeland. There will be blut or blood. And give it a little lag moment. Oh, even Reich's Commissary, Ausland, has a little bit of demilitarized zones as well. And here we are, the Jimson Ward, like everybody else, go ahead, the end of the Reich, surely. And my friends, it is necessary that the individual should finally come to realize that his own ego is of no importance in comparison with the existence of the nation. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this very, very long episode. If you did, please consider leaving a like for this long video. Subscribe if you if you're new to this channel. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we will fight the Civil War and see what happens with it. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.